money that we made I'm smoking kelp to the face I skip the fence like I'm next stick long as a clarinet so these hoes wanna play deep wet brows and pills by the thousand lean sip and spray up on Jolly Ridge Mountain the real bitch slam of the credit card scam oh they call me big but the way I'm handling my hammer do you want to die cause I'm gonna take your soul back Cause I'm gonna take your soul back, baby, on the reaper ha, ha. Keep it to the side, I got Karen at the breeze But she touching on my wiener ha, ha. I'm a really nice guy, I'm gonna say you're here first Like it's really nice, I'm each girl ha, ha. They call the crab by, cause he tame at the bottom With a stick you went deeper
Hello. What's happening? What's happening? What's good in the hood? What's, uh, what's, uh, what's happening? I'm still a little sick. Coming over it. Getting over it. Took like one or two days away, uh, after that five day stream. <laughs> That's right. Uh, and it's also thematically appropriate to be using that song today. Hello, chat. Hello. What's happening? So, hello. <laughs> hello, little guys who are around. So true, so true. Shout out to all my bitches, bros, and non-binary hoes there at Little Guys Incorporated. It is me, FPS Diesel, back at it again with another Shadow Versity stream. Um, so that song that I played at the beginning of this was by Glorb, who is a producer and did make that track as well as write the lyrics. Uh, the one thing they did not do was the was was the singing uh, because that was AI, right? Now, an interesting thing about Glorb, uh, Glorb is acutely aware of the discourse around AI, so much so that he decided to make his music copyright free. Mike is weird. Okay, hold on. I think I know what it is. How about now? Is it better now? I had uh, NVIDIA noise removal on, so. You sound like you're talking to a cardboard box. Yeah, that's why. I figured it was that. Let me get rid of that. Tell me if that fixes it. Yes. All right. Yeah. So. <clears throat> yes, I am the dungeon daddy. So Glorb's music is copyright free because he's acutely aware of the discourse between AI and artist. As such, this producer that. And and uh, listen, I I know it's AI singing that. Um, but I, I would argue that Glorb is a very talented person to have come up with those lyrics and this from a conceptual level, um, as well as to produce the track, because he did produce the track. Um, but he still makes it copyright free because he's aware of the discourse and Glorb is making a statement by doing it, right? And... Um, Shad is on the opposite side of this discourse in a very weird position. Uh, that position being that AI works can be copyrighted. Um, Shad, for those of you guys who don't know, is a YouTuber and medieval sword channel um, who's gotten into politics, who's gotten into react grift content and various other things. Uh, there is a previous five-hour stream where we all become very acquainted by it. Um, but there was some stuff I didn't cover about Chad. A few videos I wanted to look at. A few things I wanted to show. And so, we're back. So, Chad Adversity, if you guys also are weren't here, uh, is the brother of Jazza, who is an art YouTuber and professional artist. These are two brothers, both on opposite sides of the spectrum regarding AI discourse. All right. Diesel, when did you get so pregnant? What did you mean by what do you mean by that? <laughs> right. Put on the cat paw gloves this time. No. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that's that's what we're what we're taking a gander at today. We're gonna be starting. I don't think we're gonna get through this entire debate. Um, but there's a lot here to get through with <laughs> with Shad. So we're gonna be starting by looking at a debate he had on his AI channel. So let me pull that up right away. So one of his channels, as as you see here, is Chad AI, four 4K subs, and the last thing he posted was a month ago, which was him getting in a debate on the side scrollers. 
<laughs> Stop being so breedable, Diesel. I got the clip. Diesel, don't get mad at Cat with the results. I listen. If Cat ends up drawing me pregnant, I'm fine with that. I'm not like. <laughs> right. So we're not going to be looking at this debate, which is between Shad and George Alakalopoulos, right? We'll be looking at the one between Shad and professional comic artist uh, Joe M. Sontag, who ran an Indiegogo campaign recently that raised over 70 grand USD for a comic called Reaper Destroyer. Uh, Joe M. Sontag is a professional, right? Artist writer Joe M. Sontag joins Top Cow and Image Comics, Inking Legends, Matt Bat, blah, 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 and Extreme Studios. Um, anyway, they did this comic called Reaper. And, I mean, you can just look at the artist art for Reaper Destroyer right now. Uh, I get a little bit of Spawn vibes, but you can tell that Joe clearly knows what he's doing when it comes to classic i'd probably put it in like a 90s-esque style comic inking type vibe and look right so there's there's plenty of examples here to show how talented and good uh joe is at inking and being a traditional comics artist. Right? Um and you know, there's this 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 plenty here, right? This is a good looking art, right? Um before stream, I was showing it to Kat, who again, you know, is working on a comic and doing a comic right now. But this is this is whoop. Well, there's no boobs there, so we're good. Or there's no nip nip knops, so we're fine. But it, it's clear he knows what he's doing, right? It's clear he knows what he's doing. And Shad has a debate between himself and Joe. And uh, as I have decided to become Shad's number one best friend and a logger, uh, we will be. Going back to take a gander at this, I might get bored of this. We might, we might, you know, very, we might look at it, go back. Um, there's some other stuff here. Um, so we are going members only, it seems. No, no, we will not go members only with this. I might not get ads on it because of showing that little nip, nipple nopple, right? But uh, it's it, it's fine. Without further ado, we have on <clears throat> Chad M. Brooks, AI artist, Larp. Larper, maybe? I don't know. We'll talk <laughs> Larper, maybe. <laughs> oh, this is up to a great start. Talk about that too when he comes on. But Shad, welcome to the show. It's How good to be you, here, mate. Yeah, I'm going great. Yourself? I'm doing pretty good, man. Like I said before, it's uh Thanksgiving Eve over here in the States. Uh, I'm looking forward to good food and family and friends and football tomorrow. Lots of things to be excited. Yeah, I know the superwoman image. I feel like I need something a little easier to kind of uh, start start get me going to <laughs> get me going with Shad. I actually brought up the videos in advance. Um, okay. So this was from the OGL stuff from what I'm seeing right now. I'm going to click on this. If it is about the OGL, we're going to click off of it. If you guys don't remember, right. The stream is showing me as I'm, it's going to do that. I have ads on. <laughs> I know. I'm going to bounce around a bunch. Um, this is probably about the OGL, now that I think about it. Wow. Which is an important topic in regards to this video specifically, because there's a massive announcement in regards to coaching roleplay, uh, in regards to uh, perhaps uh, one amongst many uh, solutions to the issues that are going on with it. Oh, Stay okay. tuned for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's their open license. And so, D&D. Uh, &D. It's grown bigger and bigger, and what... What has existed with it? There's been a thing called an open game license. Yeah, that's about the open games license. Okay. 
Yeah, it would be impossible not to bounce around. Um, I want stuff that I'm... So here's something that you got to learn, right? You never want to get into debate about something you don't know anything about, which Shad is that guy who doesn't know anything about anything, and he gets in a debate about it, right? And so, like, I don't watch a lot of these shows uh, specifically because I'm very disillusioned with a lot of media, uh, not because it's woke or anything like that, but because it's just like I it's like mediocre kind of, you know what I mean? Uh, da, 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 da. There's so much here. I, I'm already I'm already at that point. You know, I th you do five hours on a man and you're like, oh. Let's see. Not woke enough. <laughs> but yeah, I, I, I'm generally, I, I'm not super huge into Lord of the Rings. Uh, nor do I care about how many men or women are in the show. Star Wars hasn't interest me in years. Marvel hasn't interest me in years. And it's just, it, it's just something that's not interested me. Disney wants to raise your kids. They're not so secret a grooming agenda in Baymax. Okay, fine. Sure. I understand the film industry, so we'll go take a gander. To like and comment and it's not I, I liked it when they were dressed up as serfs, right? Because I like the idea of these very out of touch peasants trying to give articulate political discussion on modern day. Basically engage as much as you can in these videos because yeah, apparently the Angry Joe drama got out of hand from what I've read in Shad's comics in comments. The thing is, I, I'm, I'm kind of looking at these streams as like a research. I am thinking of doing a main channel video on him. Okay. I am thinking of doing a comprehensive The Fall of Shadiversity. Okay. I think we're there. All right. The problem is there's a lot here. It brings us back up to the top. Yeah, and it actually does legitimately help the video get noticed by the algorithm. It's a result of seeing signs more and more. They're likely. seeing signs, guys. I've seen some very blatant ones recently that aren't really... Yeah. Well, so it was, it's right on the wall, but it's, it's a bit too clear for my liking. Yeah, yeah. What are some of the... Well, before we give the examples, basically, not only Disney, but Disney is, is on the forefront now, uh, wants to try and raise our kids for us. There are things that it feels you kids need to know, believe, and uh, adopt growing up, everything that it's going to take upon them to teach. Because it doesn't believe parents, one, have the right to raise their kids the way they want, and two, doesn't agree with the way that many parents are raising kids. I'm, I'm conservative, I'm religious as well, and so there are values and important things that I want my kids to understand growing up. Okay, pause, pause. God, we're going to be here all night. Okay, so I'm not a parent. As far as I'm aware, I'm not a parent. Um, but I have taught kids, right? I have taught kids. And something that you see in a lot of kids' media is that you impart lessons, right? It takes a village. It takes a village. Um, when you were younger, right, I assume most of you are millennial to older Zoomers in the audience, right? So growing up, you probably had shows like Dora the Explorer, even if you weren't, you know, necessarily a religious person, maybe you grew up with VeggieTales, something like that, right? They, they produce a lot of these children's shows with a very simple premise and plot and moral message. And the idea of that is to impart, generally speaking, uh, good lessons to the kid. So that way it's not just like random caca poo poo that they're showing to your child, there's a purpose to it. So for example, uh, a large part of what Lazy Town was, right? Because we all know Lazy Town from the memes. Lazy Town, a lot of those characters are built around the idea of teaching healthy habits to kids. So Sporticus is a very simple and easy to explain character in that he uh wants you to eat fruits and veggies you'll go fast you'll be powerful if you do that 
Uh, you'll be healthy if you, you know, you you run. Um, Robbie Rotten is the inverse of that. He likes to be lazy. He's like eat snacks. Um, and then you have other other characters like that kid uh, that I'm drawing a blank on the name, where he's like uh, everything is mine, right? The kid, the spoiled kid, right? And the idea of that you're is supposed to be imparted to your kid with things like that is that you don't want to act like that because that's mean and it's not cooperative, right? It's not nice. So you don't want to teach things to kids because kids are impressionable, right? So a a thing that happened in the 90s is that uh, people started to realize, oh, oh, there's like black and disabled people that exist in the real world. So that's where you had, and this is pre 90s, so the 80s, so probably about the 80s, if I'm stingy, stingy, thank you. Um, in the 80s, they started producing a lot of shows with those messages, right? A big thing from the Reagans was the pushing against drugs. Um, that was like a cooperative thing that happened between the media and the government where they started producing a bunch of these PSAs at the end of shows you would watch. So, you know, at the end of G.I. Joe in the 80s, the G.I. Joes would come out because the G.I. Joes were role models to kids of the era. They come out and they'd say, don't do drugs. Drugs are bad, blah, blah, blah. Go on with your day. Um, so this happens, right? Another thing would be like, you watch Captain Planet. You notice how there's a black kid and an Asian girl and a vaguely ethnic looking kid in, in the Captain Planet crew. That was intentional, right? Because they wanted to show that diversity because it was part of the message where it's like, oh, we're all in this together, right? So that that was there, right? And a lot of what you see being done from the creator side of it, not the like discourse producer side. That's just people talking to talk, right? They are trying to say, okay, well, we're trying to be more inclusive. All right. Well, you know, gay people are in society. We need to show gay couples raising people because, oh, you're going to be picking up your kid from kindergarten and there's going to be a family there that has two moms. Right? <laughs> Captain Lou Albano telling us that we'll go to hell before we die if we touch the drugs is a classic. <laughs> By the way, John Chairs, I do have the semen cookbook, but I'm trying to stay focused today. Were people complaining these shows were woke back then too? Um, there was probably discourse about it and probably a lot of people that weren't happy with the inclusion of probably African kids, but... I wouldn't say I'm an expert on this, but one of the things you do, I did in film school was a lot of TV studies um, and how like uh, TV and television is used in like a social aspect of society. Right. But yeah, so, so that was all. <laughs> this is Mr. Rogers woke. <laughs> So Shad, Shad is coming with the impression that if you have gay people in a show that is aimed at a younger audience, the kids will, are so impressionable that they're going to be gay, uh, which is an opinion that tends to go against most consensus about being LGBTQ. Um, so... Yeah, without uh, social media, the discourse was a lot less visible. Yeah. It was probably always there, but it's just been... In a way, I guess social media has democratized it, but the problem is, is that not everybody has something valuable to add to the discussion. <laughs> the Seaman's cookbook. Glad to see you got my text, I guess. <laughs> right. Um, and all this to say, there is and was good Christian media if he really wants to show his kids. Here's the problem is that the way he's phrasing this is that he's putting the TV in front of his kid and they're choosing this stuff. But you as a parent have an obligation to curate what media your child watches to impart good values that you feel are good to them. That's part of parenting is being able to pick and choose the things you want your child to watch to help them develop those things. That's the purpose of kids shows. You want to teach some value to a kid, maybe show them that show, right? And a lot of those kids networks are just doing like a 
you know, they're trying to cast a wide net for the parents who just like, all right, I want to make sure I put something good in front of my kid. Right. I do remember the media going after the purple Teletubby because he was too gay. <laughs> but I, I, either way, it's like if Shad doesn't want to show his kids cartoons with gay people, he might. I, I, I would, I would fundamentally disagree with that opinion of his. By the way, um, because I could, I could change that to I don't want to show my kids shows with white people and then all of a sudden I, I guarantee you Chad would have a fucking problem with it but I, I guarantee you that's where this is going where it's going to be him trying to argue that these shows are turning the freaking kids gay <laughs> that Disney disagrees with, so they're going to try and take it upon themselves to do it. Hmm. And there are hmm. things, right now, being newlywed, one day we're going to have kids, mm -hmm. and there's stuff that me and my wife watch that is obviously we think is pure and innocent and wildly, mm -hmm. like, oh, the kids would love this one day, and then I actually do watch, and I'm terrified, and I don't want them to be on the internet. Yes. Or any my son knows what a trans person is and what a gay people are. He's five, so the answer to that wasn't a long conversation about his potential identity. He just went, okay, can I have some Doritos? <laughs> <sighs> like literally it's gotten to the point that anyone who is a parent and wants to be a parent you need to understand now that you can't trust them with this I, like as a parent i am not kidding i've gotten to the point where i've had to parental block disney kids on their devices i could not even like even the content and maybe this should have been obvious i should have figured this out early on but the content that was supposed to be g-rated for kids and everything like that safe for kids and stuff no no they will they will inject what they want into kids media as well to try and counteract and, and it's just so sure parents need to be g-rated the okay it's about how you deliver the message it's like we in society know violence is bad but you don't put you don't put full metal jacket in front of a kid to teach them that violence is bad right you have a show where a kid pushes another kid down in the sandbox and then they all learn to play together and the kid who pushed the kid down learns that it's not nice to push kids down that's it so vigilant and so i've literally had to do that like they can't watch anything now basically without my pre-approval hmm. i mean it, 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 it got even worse at a danger moment at one point in which uh i like i don't know how it happened i think we assumed that there was parental locks on everything but one of our kids must have gotten one of the other tablets or anything like that and started surfing netflix not in kids yeah yeah i'm luckily nothing went too far um but that just you have no idea how much that affected me i like the fact that they okay i would not want to put youtube kids in front of my potential child right obviously i want to want to curate the media um but a lot of kids media is made by some of the best educators in the business because the best kids educators don't go into education because there's no money there um teachers should be paid more hot take um but they go into making shows from what I remember, the Wiggles was invented by teachers. Oh, the fruit salad sh song. That was, what was fruit salad for? Oh, to teach kids that, to eat fruit because it's yummy. Oh. It's so friggin' easy for some of the most innocent among us to be exposed to some of the most vile, degenerate crap. I can't. And it gets, like, you see, even in advertisements, it's just, like, even billboards and crap, they, the world is so adamant in trying to corrupt. And, and like, not the world, but the, the worst among us. So Who's trying to corrupt these kids, Shad? There's, like, a there's like a silent part of this conversation we're not addressing. Who is, who is them? And who, who, why are they trying, why are they trying to corrupt the kids? Who is they? Who's they? <laughs> adamant to try and corrupt everyone to be like them mm. misery loves company you know um all that stuff and in, so much so that we can have a different video talking about this type of corruption in a more broad sense where this is more focused on kids media and what's happening with disney and some of the examples uh, that we're seeing uh, so what were some of the specific examples you've seen recently <laughs> you know them <laughs> who's they shad i'm gonna say the quiet part out loud <laughs>
Oh, so my wife watched this Disney movie because mm -hmm. growing up she liked Disney Channel and so mm -hmm. she has a fond nostalgia for Disney movies and there's mm -hmm. this new show that came out. These guys must be like the I hate my wife boomers, oh my god. <laughs> uh, I forgot the name of it, I feel like I need to look it up. Mm -hmm. But it's this, it's like High School Musical but there's zombies, werewolves and aliens. <laughs> okay, yep. And That's cute. <laughs> they beam down, we rise up, that's stupid. <laughs> And in the most recent movie, uh, there's a non-binary. Yeah, them with three with three parentheses. So, so for those of you that don't know, the three parentheses around a them um, is a uh, is is like uh, you're tr you're saying Jews when you do that, right? You're saying Jews. Alien mm -hmm. who is romancing one of the uh, other characters, and the way that they portray. <clears throat> messages in the show i was like holy but also God. what they're trying to normal they talk in such vague generalities that unless you see the piece of media you can't inform an articulated decision on it i will say this and it's probably not the message that they're annoyed with um why are non-binary characters always portrayed as like um either the 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 mimic the uh amorphous type of character or um you know, the, the very clearly, like, alien, non-gender conforming type thing, right? And then, alternatively, uh, the only other example that I can think of was, like, what Overwatch did. And that was a really... I, I think Overwatch's non-binary character they just introduced is probably one of the ugliest characters I've ever seen. <laughs> and I feel really bad because it feels like they're, like, a caricature of non-binary people. Um, probably the best non-binary character one of my favorites is bloodhound from apex legends um and the point is is i'm bringing i'm bringing up this discussion because i think a lot of media writers are really struggling to portray that in media and that like the the mimic uh blob uh shapeshifter uh is is just the worst right um, I much I much prefer the bloodhound type character because it also presents a bunch of other interesting things about bloodhound that make them interesting. This is one yeah. of the biggest issues. This comes to fun some fundamental issues because one of the biggest things Disney is doing is what they call their gay agenda, where they are injecting their, their, their gay agenda. <laughs> oh, their gay agenda. <laughs> I, I will also say that a lot of Disney media, the way they're doing uh LGBT inclusion as something that's like region specific is also really cowardly and inappropriate in my opinion. Um, you know, like they they basically Photoshop the fucking the kiss scene out of Star Wars, the gay couple out of Lightyear. I that I don't like that. It happens all the time. It you know that's a you know the lip service type stuff that Disney does, but. and pushing um, LGBT media themes in kids' content to a massively invasive degree, okay? This isn't a quote. There's been someone who works for Disney who actually legitimately said that they are putting gay in everything. <laughs> Disney's first gay character six days at a time. Really. Now, this is the thing, okay? I don't have an issue with people living the way they want to live. In actual fact, I would fight to the death for that freedom. I, ha I f think you might actually not, but okay, buddy. Okay, one of the fundamental tenets of my faith is the freedom of choice, and protecting that freedom of choice is essential, but that does not mean I believe every single choice is equivalent. This I'm episode going... of FPS Diesel was brought to you by two bears kissing. <laughs> ...to teach my kids and encourage them to grow up into the lifestyles that I believe will give them the most happiness. That's my prerogative as a parent. Absolutely it is. And of course I believe in traditional values and things like that. Look, if one of my kids end up having issues with either gender dysphoria or same-sex attraction, I'll oh, love them the same no matter what. But the fact is, the LGBT... Thank Christ. <laughs> Thank Christ. <laughs> that would be a... I, you know, you know, whenever you see people like this, I, I always go, what if I could put them through, like, one of those, like, 
the the machine from Rick and Morty, you know, the Blitz and Shits machine where he lives his whole life. Like, I want him to, like, I want to force him through that event. And then, it, like, it ends that he's back in the Chuck E. Cheese to be, like, if he would still think and do the same thing. Community are so convinced that there is an element of nurture that can affect people indulging in different lifestyles, okay? The fact that there is so much highest, like, actual results of people either being, having gender dysphoria or same-sex attraction from those households, children being raised in those households, has a, like, a, like a shockingly high percentage of that versus conservative households shows that, nature, like, nurture does have a part in it, okay? And if there's any influence that I can do, help my kids grow into life where they can actually find someone they love and conceive life with the person that they love, that uh, there's so much happiness and joy to be found in that. I'm not discounting the wonderful blessing of, uh, of, um, uh, of adoption, which is incredible, but I think we understand there's something uniquely special about that relationship. And it's also the fundamental underpinning relationship of the human race, all right? So, I mean oh my god. 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 <laughs> at least, at least Jeremy has the cojones to not say this. <laughs> I mean, no matter the way you look at it, all right, traditional relationships help grow the human race better. I'm not saying other relationships can't help, you know, that will benefit society. I actually think they can. But the best, most efficient way is, of course, the traditional wholesome household. Uh, children being raised... Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, shit. <laughs> Oh, holy shit. Uh. By mother and father. Okay. Dude, I gotta be honest with you. If if Western couples... Okay, there's obviously... Heterosexual couples in Western civilization need to be having kids because long-term they could impact the economic stability of a country. Uh-huh. That's one thing, right? That is an actual issue that's happening. That's part of the reason that Russia is going to war with Ukraine. Two, um... Is that the world is not going to run out of people. There is a bunch of developing nations that are having increasingly large number of birth rates. Are they in places like America? No. But that doesn't mean that the world will end. It's a difference between nation states versus the population of humanity as a whole. Okay? I don't think your kids are, or, or, or an increase of gay couples is going to decrease... Those people were probably not going to reproduce anyway. <laughs> okay, that's what I want to encourage. That's what I want to instill in my child as the normal. And if there is some stuff outside of that, they need to understand where the exceptions are. That's the context. Exceptions and normality is important in children's minds specifically because children will naturally gravitate towards what is normal. And then if they are, you know, special, unique, whatever, they're individuals, okay? They are special. If your kid is uh, retarded, uh... <laughs> and they, uh, because there are many things that I'm outside of the box and not normal. People are individuals. And if they end up being outside of the box in any other way, I'm going to embrace and love no matter what, okay? But there is an element of, in, um, of influence and instilling what is normal is very important. And guess what? Disney knows this, LGBT community. Why do they think they're trying to shift the normality? What is normal in the world? Because they want the world to reflect their way. This isn't- Okay, 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 okay. Pause, pause. We're, we're approaching a conspiracy theory here, right? So outside of producing more gay people, what is the purpose? Okay, let's say there's like, all right, this is like the flat earth thing where there's too many people involved for the conspiracy theory to make any sense, right? Like, like if we all woke up tomorrow and found out the world was flat, one, why did they hide it and spend all that money to hide it for all those years? What was the purpose of that? What a huge waste of everybody's money. Um, two, what difference does it make to you or me, right? Now, now this, like, I can't go into space. My fundamental existence and how I understand the reality around me has changed from the world being flat. Okay, perfect. Well, if they're hiding that, what else are they hiding from us? Okay, right. So I understand the arguments with the flat earth, right? <laughs> but what is the long, like, the short game is n new normalization of LGBTQ, okay? Right, that's the short-term game of the big gay, right? So the big gay's short-term game is to make the big gay more normal, okay? <laughs> right? 
So lo long term plan. What is the long term plan from Big Gay? Is Big Gay's long term plan to reduce the fertility rates and reproductive rates of society at whole, so the New World Order can take over? Because there's a smaller class of working class and middle class civilians to rise up against the elites. Is that it? <laughs> Right, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not getting into the the debate between who raises a kid, what, who, any of that. Right, I'm not addressing that at all because I am frankly not equipped for that discussion. But a conspiracy theory cons discussion, I am absolutely equipped for. So, what is big gay? What what is the plan? Right. So, step one: normalize the gay. Step two: make more kids gay. Step three: have gay sex. Have have really big orgies <laughs> like what is so like i get it in a short and medium term what big gay would want but what does big gay want to do like what is big gay's global agenda right what is the big gay goal <laughs> <laughs> uh, because because that's a line of that's a line of thinking that Shad has gone down here, right? Step three, profit. <laughs> okay, okay. So hypothetically, if Big Gay were to sterilize all the hetero couples, why does Big Gay do that? Why would Big Gay do that? <laughs> Five dollars from Fernando H. Big Gay is all right. They give me cute men. But what about Big Pharma? They give you bathtub estrogen. <laughs> like, like I, I, what I'm trying to understand here is not like I don't give a shit about his opinions, really. If he if he wants to have all these thoughts or whatever, like that's totally fine. Uh, in my opinion, I don't. I'm not gonna like fight fight him on that. It's not my place to fight him. Frankly, I think the debate is uh, cyclical, ever going, and non productive. But unironically. Seriously, what is the long-term plan of Big Gay? Turn everybody gay? What's the purpose of that? Does does Big Gay work for Satan and then when the devil comes back? Then when the devil comes back, he's like, all my gays rise up and fuck them in the butt. Like, what the fuck? About inclusion and acceptance. I will teach my kids to accept everyone. I accept everyone so long as they're... Okay, okay. The purpose... The purpose... Assuming there is no conspiracy from Big Gay, the purpose of including LGBT representation in shows is to be a piece in a parent's toolbox to teach a child acceptance. That is the purpose of that. It's to open up a dialogue. So that way when your little Timmy comes up to you, he's like, Papa, what do you mean? Why, why would two men hold the cans? You can be like, well, sometimes, you know how I like, I love your mother? Well, Steve loves James. Okay, that's it. <laughs> like, like the, the, the lessons that you are taught that via kids shows are to be used as tools by the parents to open up dialogue. It's to encourage the kid's brain to have a productive discussion with their parent about a thing. To maybe encourage them to eat vegetables. Maybe they encourage them to play cooperatively. Encourage them to play fairly and not cheat. Encourage them to own up to mistakes that they do. Encourage them not to call the black kid the N-word. Not harming others or taking away the freedoms of others, okay? You love and accept them and you don't discriminate. Well, actually... Shad, Shad, don't finish that thought. Don't finish that thought. Sorry, this is, the discrimination thing gets misunderstood because I... Oh no. Yeah, kid to two men. Why are you holding hands? The men, we love each other. Kid, cool, I like Minecraft.
Thank you, Fernando. Uh huh. Exactly. I, for instance, I was very discriminating in choosing the wife I wanted to marry. I well, okay. Wait, wait, wait. I was very discriminating in choosing the wife I want to marry. Okay. 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 If there were certain people that didn't achieve my list, I would discriminate against them and not date them. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That's being selective with picking a partner. I don't know if discrimination is the is the noun or descriptor word I would use in this discussion, but please continue. Okay, so of course a level of appropriate discrimination is needed in proper- Oh my god. <laughs> the judgment everything like that, but I'm saying for- Yeah, 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 yeah. You should discriminate in who you want to have sex with and be choosy and have preference. <laughs> the word is preference. Mutable characteristics and other things like that for, you know, um, representation under the law, treating people good and everything. Of course, that's where you don't discriminate, all right? I think that's that's obvious. And I'll be teaching yeah, that. Yeah, you don't discriminate against that stuff. Okay. That's what I practice as well. The false lie that this progressive movement Disney is trying to say is that unless you embrace and not only celebrate, but promote it, you must promote it, you are a bigot. That's what they're trying to say. That's not... Is that what they're saying? Okay. The What the people who go on TMZ and say is different than what the people who make the show are trying to do. <laughs> they, they're trying to say that all this narrative, all the LGBT, you know, agenda is not only equivalent, and I don't think like, I can be fully accepting, you can be fully accepting by acknowledging the difference, saying that there, isn't, there is not an equivalence here between a relationship which can conceive life and a relationship that can't. There is a biological non-equivalence there, okay? Mm. These things it's not about birthing kids. <laughs> Oh my god, that's not what this is about. That's not what this is about. <laughs> it's actually unequivalent, but that the lie is then that you would then be discriminatory against people who are indifferent. That's the lie. It's not true at all. I would not discriminate against people in other relationships. I'm friends okay, with. Okay, okay. I would not discriminate gay is discriminate against the gays. I okay. <laughs> this is such a. F this is a fruitless argument. <laughs> of course I have friends that are gay and everything. I have friends that are trans as well and all that stuff. Oh, they must love being around you. And I can only... Really I, listen, I got, I, got, I got friends that are like that too. And it's like, I don't know. I don't go around being like uber mega PC, man. I'm probably one of the least PC people that they're friends with. But it's just like... <laughs> he's doing the he's doing the quartering like i have two black gay dads thing that's what he's doing right now i have a black friend that's what he's doing he's literally doing the i have a black friend argument well these sometimes they can be really good people or they can sometimes be crap people because they're just people okay so this lie that people are pushing is this that if you don't accept it as equivalent and even further if you do not celebrate accept it as equivalent to a heterosexual couple Okay, it's not about birthing kids, Shad. That's not what the argument is about, right? The argument is saying these are people that exist in the world, and we want people to know that they exist. So we are presenting them in TV shows so you and your child can have a discussion. It's the same thing about having an episode about racism in a kid's show, okay? About the black kid being excluded, okay? <laughs> Right and push it, you're a vile, evil bigot. That's bullcrap. Don't accept it, push back against it, embrace tradition. That, that's the thing. I we know you're not PC after the almost slur you dropped last stream. It was my PewDiePie bridge moment, guys. <laughs> Uh, but that's what Disney's trying to do. They are trying to... Yeah, yeah, Nani, you're 100% right. This is like a terminally online internet person thing. This doesn't happen in real life. Everything that's happening in this video is not equivalent to real life at all. To normalize stuff, to influence kids. And this is why there is a, there, influence, there's an issue. Influ influence kids to do what, Shad? Influence them to do what? Say to slur. <laughs> For conservative parents like me between, say, a straight kiss and a gay kiss, okay? There is one type of relationship I would... ...to parents like me between, say, a straight kiss and a gay... ...what Disney's trying to do. 
They are trying to normalize stuff to influence kids. And this is why there is a, there's an issue for conservative parents like me between, a, say, a straight kiss and a gay kiss, okay? There's an there, issue between a straight kiss and a gay kiss, okay, a thesis statement. There's one type of relationship I want to, not only because it is normal, the, the normal, guess what, the normal biological, you know, relationship between, it, for the human race, is men and women, where biological- Bro, animals have gay sex, what are you talking about? <laughs> uh, listen, Chad, you kiss someone, you don't make them pregnant. <laughs> literally made to, to go together <laughs> okay that is a, the normal state of biology and reality <laughs> but that's not listen there are plenty of animals that have gay sex okay like there are animals that just jerk off <laughs> oh no uh you're Mormon. You shouldn't be exposing your kids to kisses ever. Okay. It's true. Uh, it's just, that's it. Uh, all right. And so that should be taught to kids. Absolutely. Like so I... There's a difference between a gay kiss and a straight kiss. Okay. You're like valuing You're you're like, like the equation of how much you value a kiss is astronomically crazy. Like, Yeah, I'm sure we all know plenty of anecdotes about like gay gay animal behavior, right? I know, I know. Said this lie about this must be done, otherwise people won't be treated fairly. That's bullcrap. No, no, people can be treated fairly under the law. Right? Like you can't you can't say don't discriminate against gay people to your kid, Shad, and then in the same breath say it's different when a gay person kisses another gay person versus when two straight people kiss. Okay. He's Mormon, boss. I know, I'm arguing again. I'm literally shooting fish in a barrel. Two dollars from Cat was taken. Shad reacts to Broke Back Mountain. <laughs> he, he wouldn't be able to make it through it. He'd be hard as a rock. Does Shad know the difference between a straight or a gay kiss? Does he kiss a lot of men? <laughs> and all that stuff. And the fact that they are so aggressive and, like, what I say, like crazy aggressive against any resistance to that, I and calling them vile bigots, homophobes, all that stuff. Yeah, you know, you know, like, like, yeah. As long as they love each other, who cares, right? Like, if you if you if you happen to know a gay couple and there's like a domestic violence situation going on, like that's different, right? That doesn't mean all gay people are in a domestic violence situation. Like, that's the kind of shit like chat, chativersity be thinking, bro. <laughs> Goes to show you that no, 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 no. This isn't about just equality. All right, it's about supremacy. They want power. They want, they want to subvert. Whoa, whoa, they want supremacy. Okay, okay, okay. So this is a certified hood classic. Does Shad masturbate with crumbs in the bed? Listen, the crumbs debate has been going on for like two days. All right, I, I don't even get me started. But. So, so big gay wants supremacy over society. So once, all right, all right. So we're getting a little long, longer term. All right. Step one, uh, produce gay TV shows. Step two, <laughs> cloudy. He's all right. I want power. Step two, have a bunch of gay soldiers. Step three, go get gay supremacy. So once you have gay supremacy, what do you do with all that power? How can how can how can one gay have all that power? As Kanye once said. Many traditional values, because this is what confused me. If they want acceptance, why aren't they pushing for acceptance? But they're pushing for promotion to encourage more people. And it's not about embracing who you really are. Okay, they want Maybe people you who really are gay. But... <laughs> Uh, like only the slightest gender dysphoria, the slightest same sex attraction, they want them to just embrace it whole. Like, what if it was only like the slightest small bit? Technically, doesn't mean that they're more straight than they are gay. No! Embrace it! I mean, the, like. Five dollars from Cool and Girls. Why do I feel like he got turned down in school by a guy who was better taste than dating him, and now he has a chip on his shoulder? 
I don't I I don't even know where no like I don't I couldn't even begin to tell you where this comes from right because like Shad's opinions right now are like an amalgamation of a bunch of like talking points that come from politicos you know so people who do content in politics because it's like an amalgamation of a bunch of different people's opinions rather than him having these opinions himself because a lot of them jumble back on each other and are like double negatives or don't add up to anything so like part of the problem and the reason i get so frustrated with shad is because he says a thing and then he says a thing that directly contradicts the thing from the previous sentence and a lot of his stuff is like that so I, I I couldn't even tell you where this comes from other than it has to have origination in other people that make content like this. Um, like obviously like the quartering or something, but then like there's people like that are, that are much better at articulating what Shad is saying, even if you don't agree with them, like he he's literally just presenting the worst way to do these arguments, period. The fact that they tried to accuse me, a straight man, of saying that I find gay sex repulsive as homophobic, it's like, what do you- I find gay sex repulsive. I mean, Shad, I don't want to fuck a man either. But when you walk up to gay people in public, Shad, right, or you get on camera, so me me saying I don't want to have sex with the men, men, I think cocks are gross. I don't really understand why straight women are into that shit, but I'm glad that someone is. <laughs> But would, would you get on camera, Shad, and you say, I think gay sex is repulsive in a video where you're talking about gay people. It comes off as homophobic. The word repulsive is a really strong adjective, adverb. It's a descriptor word, whatever. I don't, I don't know. But it's a really strong descriptor word, right? You want to sugarcoat those things. You want to sand them down so people don't get so repulsed when you say things. Yeah, I feel like he doesn't know how to use words that aren't absolutely extreme. Yeah, he's a straight guy in a heterosexual marriage. Of course he's going to find gay sex repulsive. But you can't walk into the street, walk up to two gay people and be like, I find gay sex repulsive. You know? <laughs> you trying to do then okay because the reverse isn't true like if a gay person found straight what, what do you mean what are you trying to do then what do you chad they're not trying to fuck you actually to be honest i think a lot of gay men would love to have sex with chad he is on the gay sex chart for youtubers sex repulsive that's fine but it's the reverse mm. so it's not about equality and equal treatment it's about promotion and pushing something further that i need to be okay with gay sex and it's funny actually someone i need to be okay with gay sex no one's saying for you to have gay sex chad if two people have sex in a bedroom and you're not involved, why do I need to ask you for consent? It's like two men and they're like, I consent, I consent. And then it is shattered the corners like, I don't consent. <laughs> Commented on that. Like, when I say, okay, yeah. like people will have free choice. They can do what they want. When they say, okay, they, they, they're, they're okay for me is that I could have it thrown in my face. And if I have any. They're not having gay sex in fucking kids shows though. <laughs> any normal reaction, like, like any normal straight person would, that's homophobic. Like what? That's literally saying there is something wrong with being straight. You are bad for being straight. Just having normal straight reaction to that. Hmm. Wrong. Sorry, I did cut you off what you're saying. <laughs> Someone commented, said something really interesting. They said anything sexual where there isn't any attraction is repulsive. So kids younger and stuff, yeah. when they think of yeah. sex, they go, oh, yeah. that's gross, yeah. disgusting. Yeah. And so it, it Guess what? lines up with your thing. Being... People sucking on feet and trying to feet. I get the same reaction. <laughs> of course it's not. To... That's not, that's not the same thing that you're like equating different things. Go to therapy. I like actually just go to therapy. You don't know how to articulate your thoughts. <laughs> the conversation around gay people isn't always sex. They're not always having sex. <laughs> Literally, who is saying it's bad to be straight non-ironically? Crazy people who exist on Twitter. You, you know, like last stream where I was talking about the guy who wanted to line everybody up of a different political persuasion than him and then to kill them like th those kind of people but those kind of people don't have a job because they're crazy and the ones and the ones that do have a job normal people don't take them seriously that writer for kotaku Alyssa mckentry or something i don't know she's been involved in like the gamergate 2 stuff right 
Like, she is actually just a crazy person, and I can't believe she got a job at Kotaku. And anybody who takes her seriously, it's like, she's not a real fucking journalist. Like, why fucking listen to her? Like, why do you give a shit about her opinion? Like, who gives a fuck what Kotaku has to say? Let them go under. To where you're going to find it? Movie Bob tier beliefs. Yeah, these are Movie Bob beliefs. Yes! That's, that is normal. Yet people literally attack me as being a home factor just stating a blatant fact. Chad, and Chad, that you, you're saying two gay people in public holding hands makes you sick. <laughs> There's the bias and the agenda. Because that would only be the case if there is an agenda on dis display. Where they don't want equal treatment or acceptance, they want embracement. Mm. Okay, they want it to actually be pushed further. What do, you, what, do, what do you mean? Again, you're talking about this thing. What do you mean? What do you... Okay, so big gay gets power. What does big gay do with the power? Do they turn America into the gay country? <laughs> There's a massive issue about fetish content being snuck into kids' media. But it has literally nothing to do with anything Shad is complaining about. Yes. Why? Look, they want the, people have been trying to subvert their nuclear family for ages. Okay. Why they, have they been trying to subvert the nuclear family? What is the pro? What is you subvert the nuclear family? What do you do with that? Right. It's a conspiracy. What happens after? You need to explain what happens after. That's rather important. A lot of subtext and uh, like reasons for all this. We won't go into that. We're just sharing it is happening you can okay so you're not going to explain why you're just going to say that it's happening that's not that's not good that's such an extreme thing that you're not articulating on i want to know what big gay's plans are <laughs> can't confirm we are building a big gay ray to make america big gay you can see you can see the blatant contradictions on display and disney is all, like they are open about it admittedly they celebrate it to the point where four dollars and 99 cents from red kitten can't wait to see what he thinks about asexuals god forbid not everyone wants sex or procreation they yeah listen <laughs> one topic at a time okay <laughs> we gotta teach this guy from the ground up i want to know about big gay okay that's what i've been saying want to rate they you no parents you're you're bigoted you're homophobic if, if you like encourage any traditional listen okay shad i get it you don't want to tell people you don't want people telling you how to raise your kids and i agree with you these fucks who are, are not raising kids or have no kids should not be talking about it which is why i haven't chastised you on how you raising your kids i probably did earlier but let me just clarify you can raise your kids however you want shad Okay, that's my official statement. I don't want to impose you to have to raise kids in a particular way, right? If you want them to ra raise them however you want, do that. But, like, you you are having a fundamental misunderstanding about the current issue. <laughs> Lifestyle? That's all big and homophobic. So much so that we're going to force it, try and get it under the radar, try and do it blatantly sometimes, and hide it and squeeze it in. And, like, for instance, the Baymax show is yeah. a good example. Like... And not only, also they're trying to sexualize kids at shockingly early ages. When I say sexualize, exposing kids to adult concepts of puberty and sexuality way before they should be exposed to it, okay? Yeah, but because Hollywood is filled with pedophiles. But not all those pedophiles are gay people. <laughs> they're pedophiles. If a kid is even taught about sex much earlier than what they're ready to, that legitimately increases the likelihood of them indulging in those activities early on because they're familiar and they know what's going on or even how to do it, okay? There's a reason why- Okay, so, okay, okay, or whatever, Shad, sure, okay. Why you teach kids about this stuff when the stuff starts to naturally manifest normally. If yeah, you in puberty, right, you teach, you teach kids about puberty when they're going through puberty, okay. We inject it earlier they want to sexualize kids earlier hmm this what's i'm not walking up to like an eight-year-old and being like you know how you were made your parents got naked and rubbed together you know what's gonna happen to me they're gonna take me away in handcuffs <laughs> does this guy think gay equals pedophile i know this is why there are people get accused of being groomers and stuff because the, the 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 sexualization of kids at a young age is terrible and the fact that kids are having sex at a younger age is horrifyingly bad 
Okay. Yeah, I think it's a little crazy. I had a friend who uh, lost his virginity at like eleven, and um, he had a he had a lot of hangups, a lot of hangups. Well, first of all, you're a kid, so you can't consent. But he considered it a consent consensual event. Um, but he told me a story, and all I could think in the back of my head was like, "This is not a consensual story. That's not what you're explaining." Yeah, Nickelodeon was doing that too without gay characters. It's not a gay thing. It's a gross people thing. Yeah, I, I, I was literally just thinking about the Quiet on Set documentary with Dan Schneider. Oh my goodness, early pregnancy, unwanted pregnancy and all that stuff. This is not good for individuals and societies in any measure. Like, it's, it's actually important for society. If you want a, a better society, lesser unwanted pregnancies, more stable households to have stable incomes. Like literally, if you want better tax revenue, even back to then, to have like, stability, all that stuff in society. There, there is so it goes back many, to there's so yes, teen pregnancy does reduce the rate of person's productivity. Yes, yes, it isn't uh, what 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 yes yes yes. You if 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 you, teen pregnancy tends to reduce the likelihood that you're going to get a degree. It tends to reduce the possibility of you getting a life that is going to be stable and financially reasonable. Like, <laughs> Shad, being gay doesn't lead to unwanted pregnancies. No, really? <laughs> yeah. Finishing school, not getting pregnant before, you're ready, like they're ready and everything like that, having a full-time job and all that stuff. And you can avoid poverty in so many ways to do that. Yes, 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 yes. Teen pregnancy is going to lead to poverty. Yes, 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 Shad, yes. What does this have to do with gay people? They can't give birth. And if you have a side, two gay men, if a man fucks a man in the ass, he's not going to get a butt baby from his ass. Society of most people avoiding poverty, guess what? This society flourishes as a result. These are broad, overarching effects that are happening. Sorry, do you look like you're going to no, say I'm something? I'm just having realization <laughs> moments here. <laughs> truth bombs, baby. Um, it's true, though. Yeah. This is absolutely true. And so, if you want to benefit just society, you should be encouraging. Basically, abstinence until you're ready to have children, at the very least. I'm more true. Abstinence. Okay, listen, you just want your values to be taught. Just say that. Just be like, I think the world would be a better place if everybody was listening to my religious values and put it into media, rather than all this other liberal stuff. If you just said it like that, I'd just be like, okay. But like, you're, you're like trying to be like big thinker fucking Socrates here, but you're fucking coming off as like the fucking manic crackhead down the road. Traditional abstinence before marriage and practice what you preach. Did not have sex until I was married and I have been blessed so much as a result, okay? And <laughs> we blessed so much as a result. <laughs> At the very least, you should not be having these types of sexual relationships with anyone unless you're prepared to have children with them. Because guess what? Sometimes prediction contraception doesn't work. You need to, that is the real reality of these things. And if you are teaching sexual, just because it's fun, get into yeah, it. Yeah, okay, but what does that have to do with gays? Yeah, exactly. Especially kids at shockingly young ages. One, I think you're encouraging pedophilia. <laughs> I'm gonna fucking, I'm gonna fucking. <laughs> what? Dad just admitted he's bad at sex. <laughs> Okay, okay, Chad. Okay, okay. That's a, that was the statement Chad said. Uh, okay. Contraception doesn't work. You need to... That is the real reality of these things. And if you are teaching sexual just because it's fun, get into it. Especially kids at shockingly young ages. One, I think you're encouraging pedophilia. Um, okay. Okay, yeah, yeah, okay, okay. All right, all right, all right. He's saying if you put sexual concepts in a show... If you put sexual concepts in a show, you're encouraging pedophilia. Ergo, there shouldn't be gay people in the shows because gay people will encourage pedophilia? Is that the line of thinking? Because please see all the iCarly stuff, the foot fetish, Dan Schneider shit. Hey, I, why encouraging kids to have uh, understand sex and then be exposed to sex and actually at a younger... Okay, and it's not okay that kids are doing it with each other as well. 14 year olds should not be freaking having it, the sex, but it, by exposing these adult concepts to them early on, it's all the, it is grooming. That's why conservatives are pushing it back against this. And so in Baymax, they have episodes where the entire episode is uh, around the context of a girl having a period. Mm. Okay, six year old uh -huh. is supposed to be, is going to be watching like, okay, and then. Is, is Baymax for a six year old? Why are you putting Baymax in front of a six year old then? It should be around like a 10, 11, 12, 13, you know, like for the ages that are going to be.
going like those young ladies who are going to have the first period. Not like a five year old child. It's like, what's a period? What's it related to? And the, uh, the snowball effects, of course. Whoa, 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 wait a second. Wait a second. If you have a daughter and she hasn't had a period yet, having the conversation about what a period is is probably important even before it happens. I know I've told this story on stream before, right? But I had an anatomy professor and she was a woman. And this was one of those weird, one of those weird like anecdotes, right? Um, and it was, again, she was a woman. And so, you know, we had just finished working on like uh, spines of an animal. And there was like three men in the class and the rest was women. And, you know, we're all there in our scrubs. It's fucking like 8 o'clock in the morning. So we're all tired. And she lines us all. She lines up all the women in height order. Right? And it was really weird. So he she lined them all up. And then she started asking them in height order from shortest to tallest when they got their period. And the shortest women all had their periods earlier than the tallest women. And that is how she was like, she was explaining a concept of how uh, when women get their period, they stop growing in height and, and stuff like that. But all I could think was like, holy shit, this is really fucking weird and embarrassing <laughs> to like <laughs> do this. But that that was one of my one of my weird college moments. She was a really strange lab professor. Um and then after that, then then we uh, dissected an eye or something. I don't remember. Yeah, I don't. I don't know why she did that. I will say though, the the shortest individuals generally were had their period younger um except for like there was like two outliers um it was like a pretty big lab but drive by classmate lore <laughs> yeah no that was like one of those like oh i didn't really want to know this about everybody thanks um, there was another time where, okay, so now, now there, there was a time when we, this was the worst. So we had to, you should look at what said. $5 from QTV's hood ornament. You should loom up West side Tyler. He's done a lot of streams on Chad's weird behavior. It's far worse than just his bad AI takes. Yo, I know. I know, all right. I had a teacher welcoming me to womanhood when I got my period, so that's the thing. Oh, my God. I'm picturing, like, it's a... Like, like the teacher comes up to you and shakes your hand. It's like, welcome to the club. <laughs> yeah, I, I can't remember what it was. We either dissected an eye... Because it was something with the endocrine system, so I might be conflating two, two days. Um where that happened it, it was either an eye or we were looking at like the amygdala of a brain uh because we had goat brains and like formaldehyde that we took out and we split in half and then looked at the inside to see each part of it it was either a goat or a pig brain um we only we only did something with cadavers once and they would store the cadavers in the other room it was really creepy. Chad's takes are making me not if it's like worse than just a woke man.
I had an instructor that responded to OK Boomer with OK Snowflake. <laughs> Dude, I I am loving I am loving Shad's ridiculous takes. I I honestly don't think I'm even gonna be able to get through this video. Um, why was this the most replay? <laughs> And there are heaps of gay relationships as well. There's one that's saying, and then there's about tampons and stuff. And this is just one thing against the, uh, the whole larger thing. You can see how much it's progressed because you look at like Big Hero 6, the first movie, there wasn't mm. anything. anything. There wasn't even any romances really in that yeah. movie. There was nothing. And now mm. Baymax is a TV show. Yeah. Every second episode, it's just all about like, sex. Seriously, what's their thought process? I think we should have a whole... I, are you guys watching kids' shows? <laughs> episode framed around the concept of a girl having her period why is it like do you think parents are not going to be teaching girls about their that when it's their appropriate time and prepare well that's the point of putting it in a tv show you fucking muppet why do you think it's in the tv show that's the point is to open up the discussion <laughs> oh my god <laughs> he's just not he can't put two and two together like everything exists in like little boxes you know and these boxes are like anything to do with your bits that are, are reproductive in nature they go in this box that's the sex box regardless of the context Okay, like Jesus Christ. Uh. <laughs> uh, this man is a pair of clown shoes. <laughs> Why does Disney think it's their responsibility to even raise the concept? It shouldn't be. And the fact that they are so arrogant to think that, oh, this is, we, like, kids need to, it's not your place, Disney. Friggin' know your role. To the point where Disney is garbage. Parents should not let their kids watch this crap. And I'm just like, no, like, and there are some old school Disney things that are still good that actually share traditional. <laughs> I'm just thinking of like, there's some old school Disney things that are still good. And it's like that racist depiction of a black kid in that old 1940s Disney movie they want you to remember. Values and uplifting and stuff. Back when Disney had a soul. <laughs> yeah, had, it is, had uh, there, there was a social yeah. norm that was a bit more traditional. Yeah, yeah, but there are some great old school Disney stuff that I still want my kids to, you know, experience and enjoy. Like, my daughter loves princesses and I want to see princesses be saved by princes. Uh, and... Uh, you know, things that teach girls to be girls, boys to be boys, and to embrace these wonderful things because it's wonderful. Women are, are amazing. Men are amazing. And they do amazing things for each other and society. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Guys, you think, you think the gay issue with Shad is hard? Get ready for the trans issue conversation with Shad because that's going to be a rough one. Oh, my God. And I don't think women so much often... The I think women should stop the sentence. Just stop it. Don't don't finish the thought. You're gonna lose. Narrative is that women need to act more like men because being a woman is enough, and I find that so insulting to women. No, being like and and men men are toxic and bad, and they need to act like women. Okay, and this. <laughs> Chad, you're you one. First of all, I'm not even gonna broach the woman part. <laughs> I'm not even gonna broach the woman part. But as a young man, okay. You are, you are not masculine enough to teach me what is and isn't proper masculinity, okay? I think I am more masculine than you, okay? You are soy, you are weak, you are beta, you're fat, you're a loser, you're out of shape. <laughs> I don't care how many kids you have, you're soy. Seeing this shift, and that's terrible. It's me. It's it's messing up people's heads. And to fight back is teach kids 
to love who they are as a, and boys to love being boys, girls to love being girls, growing up to be mothers and fathers, and they will be happy. And of course there's going to be exceptions, okay? But that doesn't mean the exception needs to be imposed on everyone else. And when there's exception, you're embracing and love them as you always would, especially as a parent. <sighs> Disney's friggin' vile these days. And it's not only Disney, by the way. Look at Netflix, look at... Cartoon Network oh. and all the other kid channels and TV shows and... <clears throat> Has the guy next to Chad said anything at all? No, he's just like nodded his head and agreed. He's literally just there to be this like... This is a certified hood classic. Gee, I wonder why his YouTube career is circling the drain. Yeah, I know, right? What could he possibly have done? Whatever else. So Disney wants to raise your kids. Don't Reminder them... that these people vote. Well, they don't live in America, so it's not like they're vote mad. <laughs> don't let them get away with it. And uh, it would be to the point now that if I wasn't a reviewer... I would like, I, I'd describe delete it all. You even like, skill. Shad maybe like seven years ago could have told me what masculinity was when he only talked about swords and shit. Yeah. Off Disney Plus completely. Yeah, they're not getting my money anymore. Yeah. Um, and uh, this is what also why streaming is a bit crap because if, if you, the classic DVDs, and we've got the DVDs, it's like you, get, you can get all the good classics and you don't have to be exposed to the crap. And hey, if you want to watch a good classic, old school, you know, family friendly Disney thing. You want to watch Song of the South. <laughs> there's a DVD right there. And you know, Disney has been changing like problematic elements in their old school media yeah, and yeah, stuff. Yeah. You get the classic as it was meant to be. Because usually their problematic things is their woke agenda saying, oh, this is bad and all that crap. Yeah, but it shows Swiss, like, I watched one. So, Swiss Family Robinson Treehouse. Mm -hmm. The old school one. I didn't even know it was a remake of a black and white one. <laughs> but it's, it's like, that goes back in the day. But I was watching the old school Swiss Family Robinson Treehouse one, and it had it came up with this freaking annoying disclaimer. It was like, this reflects things that, like, you know, our uh. beliefs and traditions that we don't necessarily agree with. And when you watch it, you know why. Because <laughs> they're getting shipwrecked, right? Uh -huh. And the mother's like, I need help to get onto the boat. Help me, Joe. Help me, sir. The sons are helping the mother and everything like that. <laughs> And then, I love it. This is this is great, right? Um, because guess what? Guys usually do fare a little bit better in survival situations. It's just the reality. And so... Shad. Shad. I'm an able-bodied male. Okay? I'm an able-bodied male. I am in good shape. I can run for miles with 60 pounds on my back. Okay? I have done marathons that are multiple hours long through the mud and the woods okay i have crawled through muddy trenches with electric fences that electrocuted me as i went through them all right i went camping for one night and we had to pack it in because i went oh shit we're gonna die <laughs> surviving in the woods is much more about technical skill than it is about raw prowess. Okay, you can be the most fit person in the world. If you don't know how to start a fire and you are lost in a survival situation, you will die. It is hard to start a fire. Okay? It is hard to start a fire. It is hard to keep your body warm. It is hard to protect yourself. Those things are hard. And you need to know the skills. Skills that can be taught and that are not exclusive to gender. At all. People understood. It was obvious reality back then. Okay. But this is problematic. You can't show men supporting women in times when they're in an environment in which it's harder for them to just get by in. And guess what? The inverse is the reality as well. Okay. There are areas in which men, men do not perform better as women. And then women take the lead. Absolutely. Okay. But in this survival situation, you might understand why. And at one point in... What's the classic Swiss family Robinson treehouse? It's a blast, okay? There's a moment where the two brothers want to explore the island, they go off, and they... Spoilers, but this is also... Anyway, I feel this is You've had how many yeah. years to watch this? They, I mean, come come across, they come across pirates, like, robbing a trader ship, and there's a captain and the first mate, and they go and save them, and they end up saving the first mate. And this first mate, it's kind of obvious when you're watching, it's pretty clear, but he's bumbling, he's, he's, not, he's not holding his weight, he's not keeping up, and the two brothers are getting really annoyed. It's like, this guy just is useless. And it turns out he's a girl. <laughs> like, like yeah, pretending to be a guy, so basically the pirates didn't take advantage or anything like that. And when the brothers find out, they're like... Gentle, they're like helping her down the rock faces, going through the things, doing all the stuff. <laughs> and it does show this girl being pretty useless, which in most situations, that would be the reality. <laughs> uh... Okay. 
listen, guys, if you're if you have kids, do me a favor. And I know this sounds like a joke. Teach teach them, regardless of gender, how to tie a knot, how to start a fire. Okay. <laughs> All right. Teach them how to start a fire with a ferro rod. All right. <laughs> Teach them how to close up a wound. <laughs> All right. I know that seems ridiculous. Teach them to do those things. Okay. <laughs> Stronger guys handling things, fighting like anac anacondas and stuff. And the girls trying to learn how to swim. Learn how to swim. Struggling a lot. That's problematic now. You you can't have men, you know, being gentlemen to women in these day and age. Shad, I, Shad, you are not the guy to be like, like Shad is the kind of guy who'd be like, if I if I was in the woods and it was a bear, I could take the bear, no problem. I could take the bear. <laughs> Everyone should know how to cook, clean, open jars, and change their own fucking oil. Thank you, Axis, a hundred percent. Every one of you should know how to change a fucking tire. <laughs> All of you should know how to cook basic meals. You should know how to fold your damn laundry. How sexist is that? <sighs> how sexist is that? <laughs> it's so sad. It's sad. It's a sad state. Men, be a man and be a gentleman. Be a man and be a gentleman. Bro, you're not doing that. Listen, I don't care who's walking through the door. If I'm at the door, I hold the door open for you. All right? You hold the door open for me, I say thank you. Doesn't matter who you are, I do it. All right? That's the appropriate right thing to do. All right? Being a gentleman comes through simple acts and gestures. It doesn't come through preaching on a YouTube channel. Doing this right now is not a gentlemanly act at all. You know how to fold a fitted sheet? <laughs> how sexist is that? Chad, after saying something sexist. <laughs> you know, being gentlemanly is giving respect to everybody. All right. Don't assume people's life skills based off of gender. True, true. Yeah, he ain't he ain't a gentleman at all. Women with respect, okay? Open the door for them, do all their stuff because the genders are different, all right? And there's a responsibility that exists with men because men are bigger and stronger. And as a result, we bear the heavier burden sometimes. It might not be fair, but we can handle it better. That's your role as a man. Be a man and sacrifice. And that's the, you know, that's the fundamental themes between both femini femininity and masculinity. It's actually sacrifice yeah, to Shad regularly calls women fat, ugly and manly, but he's also oh gentlemanly. Listen, all okay, right. If you are fat you probably have maybe maybe he has more leeway to call another person fat because it takes a fat to know a fat i used to be fat <laughs> i used to be really heavy but it's just it's so rich to hear chad like talking about beauty standards when he is the perfect gay bottom <laughs> Five dollars from cat was taken, we didn't start the fire it was always burning since the world been turning we didn't start the fire no we didn't light it and neither did diesel camp in. No my brother lit the fire, my brother taught himself how to light a fire okay I am very glad he was there. Perform the roles that you are capable of doing better because of your inherent natures as either a man or a woman. And men, when it's protecting and providing, we will sacrifice and do that. Lift the heavier box, open the jars, open the doors. But those are just small reflections of a larger uh, like, uh, obligation for men to step up and do what really needs to be done when the Titanic is sinking and you protect the most vulnerable among us. And so if the Titanic is sinking, you open a jar. <laughs> the jar. The jar is a small reflection of you sinking on the Titanic, fellas. And for women, it's a matter of sacrifice as well, in, sacri in, in creating environments that nurture life and making sacrifices to help do that because they do it so much better than men. And not only actually just nurturing real life, the life that they are able of creating, but creating environments in which life can flourish. Mm -hmm. Okay, Women, you know, there's actually generally a trend that women are better psychologists than men because they're better at listening and other things like that. 
Um, they can be great, like authors. Women, like, look at Jane. <laughs> oh shit! I wanna, I wanna be like, I wanna take Shad out into a survival situation and just do like a, like a TV show. I wanna, I wanna, I wanna do a TV show where it's like a survival guy and like one of these masculinity experts. And they drop us in like some survival situation. And that guy has to like figure out how to survive. <laughs> right? And it's just a completely humbling experience where he just fails constantly over and over and over and over. <laughs> Women be listening and something. Austin, because their understanding of human character nature, one of the most amazing things that amazes me about Jane Austen, Pride and Prejudice, is her understanding of character. Like, she understands <laughs> people, and her ability to write dumb people so authentically is amazing. If you want to see some of the most incredible works of literature where dumb people are written so perfectly realistic, you read Jane Austen. She write like, because what, like, you can tell, yeah, she was- don't, don't tell them, don't tell them about the problems Jane Austen faced in getting published. A very smart woman, and she grew up around lots of dumb people, <laughs> and, and she knows it like, like she was drawing from experience. Oh man, uh, Mr. Collins, just look at how uh, Mr. Collins is amazing in Pride and Prejudice. Um, and so, yeah, what I was saying is femininity is about sacrificing. Yeah, maybe it is sacrificing career to raise a family, but generally it's actually not much of a sacrifice because that gives them more happiness in the long run as well uh, in, in raising children, stuff like that. This but is men insane. This is a video about Disney's gay agenda, guys. This is a video about Disney's gay agenda, and he's just been preaching for the last, like, 15 minutes. Okay, he's literally just been preaching. <laughs> oh, my God. All right, I think my brain is primed now. I think my brain is primed. <sighs> I'm not going to trust anyone with Shad in their name from now on. I know it's cursed. Um, okay. What is a man's worth? <laughs> oh. I really want to get to the AI stuff, guys, but his political opinions are absolutely fucking hilarious. You might have heard the saying that uh, men are born with nothing and women are born with everything or something or a variation like that. Women are born with inherent value and men need to uh, uh, build their value, earn their value as they grow older. And uh, women lose that that kind of value or or uh, something like that as they grow older and men, oh, no. they, they gain more value oh, as no. they grow older or something like that. <laughs> I bro, joking, bro, bro can't articulate the quote that he's trying to say. Hate that mentality because could we slow down and just think about it a little bit more and if you join me with this kind of logical analysis as we consider it properly i hope you will discover with me the inherent falsehood and lies in this mentality because it is full of crap all right first of all the thing that i hate about it is that it is trying to and it's focused towards young men now i can i get why young men can see this as an empowering message where you know you're not going to be given anything in life for free so you need to take life by the balls and earn what you have you need to build value make yeah, yourself a worthwhile yeah, yeah, man yeah, greg you may have heard of some things that i can't remember <laughs> and uh, build yourself into the type of person that people will want to give attention to and that women would want to be around and have a relationship with there is truth to that absolutely but if you it, think that I, I will say this. Everybody should build value in themselves regardless of gender. Okay? Like, I, I, I gotta be frank. Like, if you're a lady and you just... And, like, let's say you're somebody that's, like, expecting a guy to come along and just, like, fix everything. You know? Or get, get all the bread for everything. $10 from Axis1247. Disney's only gay agenda is every time they put a gay person in a movie now they pretend it's the first one ever and have to announce it and shit like they just invented sliced yeah. bread. $9.99 from Red Kitten, can we have just a little flex since you wanna keep punishing us? I'm wearing a long sleeve today. <laughs> Thank you guys. <laughs> Oh God! Yeah, you need to you need to invest in yourself. You can't expect a man or a woman or anybody to come along in your life and instantly take care of you. 
Okay. You can't expect that to happen. You got to take care of your body. You got to clean yourself. You got to moisturize. You got to work out. You got to take care of yourself because you only got one of you. You got to do that for yourself, not for somebody else, but for you. Okay. You got to fucking invest in yourself and find value in you because in this day and age, ain't nobody's going around in the dating pool expecting someone to just cover all their monetary expenses. That's not happening. You need to work together. Are you watching his freak out over the Mario trailer and how Peach is wearing pants? Guess we're going to that. Is it woke or anti woke? They made Mario an idiot and Peach is a girl boss. I I I hate that I'm uh on the same page as Jack Saint because uh Jack Saint is a bread tuber and those people don't like people like me as a drama tuber. <laughs> Welcome back to The Watch, and uh, a new trailer has just- Oh no. Oh no. Three white guys dressed as knights. <laughs> Three white guys walk into the most masculine room you've ever seen. Masculine room you've ever seen. ...dropped, which has brought up some guys, suppressed rage and feelings in Nathan, and he wants to talk about them. Give it one job. <laughs> Make a bloody good adaptation. Do you know how hard it is for Nintendo to like give their properties to anyone? And this is also their first movie, right? Well, they, no, they've done Warner Brothers. Like the their past. first animation movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There's, yeah. A, there's a big movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a reason why they haven't done something in like 20, 30 years. Because that movie sucks. And I remember enjoying it as a kid. I don't have any particular attachment to the Mario property and brand. There were dumb, stupid things as a kid I thought was hilarious. Yeah. Fat lady with big jumpy boots. And... <laughs> Literally three white knights, three white guys podcast. <laughs> 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 Which I'm fine, but look, after Sonic, I, I realized what we're missing out on. Right. It's a bad movie. Don't get me wrong, I'll say it's good, but I remember enjoying it as a kid. Sorry, yeah, that's fine. Sonic, okay? Sonic 1 and 2, the movies, the adaptations, have been good. I've enjoyed them. They've been fun. Do you reckon that's what gave Nintendo the Yeah, push? I reckon they're like old rivals. They're like, oh, hell nah. Sega, I, God, have Sonic, yeah. you do it. Sega, no, Mario's gonna win. I don't think so in this one. <laughs> the gay vibes are undeniable. All right. Gay switch. Gay bottom. Gay top. The Otter, The Bear, uh, I forget what the other one is, what's, so an otter, a bear, the twink one, the twink animal. <laughs> I rules like, oh hell nah, Sega, I, God, I, Sonic, yeah, yeah, do it. Sega, no Mario's gonna win! I don't think so in this one. What Nintendo? Look, I think they got the great animation studio to do it, Illumination, who did, um, Super Bowl Me, mm -hmm. um, a bunch of other ones as well, and I was quite impressed at this, the opening of the first trailer, okay? Although I will admit when they announced it in the Nintendo Direct and showed all the cast of the celebrities voice acting, I was Chris Pratt! Yeah. yeah. And, and they keep they kept I saying you didn't know the gay terms, boss. Yeah, but I also have like this humongous female audience who bless me with knowledge for some reason. Okay, trust us. Okay, it's, it's gonna be good. Tr trust me. I'm working on my Mario voice, okay? I'm Chris Pratt, I'm an actor, I'm trained, I can do a voice. And this is me, Mario. Yeah, even, that, yeah. even even tyrant. Can, like, it's not hard to try and pretend to be. It's no. me, Mario! Like, we should have had, we should have had, good. We should have had the actual Italian here, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, Marcus isn't with us today. Uh, Twink Boy Squire. But don't worry, he'll be back. Uh, yeah, and so it felt like Chris Pratt didn't even try just doing the Chris Pratt watch because that's the thing I mean oh. what's the point of having Chris Pratt if he's not going to do Chris Pratt like, yeah. is, is that like, the like argument Jack Black right does Bowser mm -hmm. such a good job like yeah, I, I hear Jack Black like, occasionally but most of it's just this raspy like Bowser voice yeah, like, I didn't really recognize him as Jack yeah. Black yeah. but these other three actors are just doing I think a dismal job at trying to portray these characters they're just talking themselves and then slapping it on an animation I was going to say uh, Jack Black is also like a, a renowned singer and he's yeah. done you know things like Kung Fu Panda. so like he is top tier like yeah. S tier mm. when it comes to voice acting so mm. I'm not too surprised about that so it, just in terms of that it frustrates me because for Nintendo to have such strong grasp on their franchises it feels like they're slipping away with this one and I feel like this movie is set up now to fail 
and then we're not going to get any good adaptations. So really funny, right? Um, uh, after this, the teaser came out where we got the first like preview of the Mario's yeah. voice. Uh, the trailer, of course, had other you know voice actors in other languages, and they showed the other languages, and they have him in like th there's the uh, some Italian one where it's just his classic you know yeah. Mario kind of thing, yeah. like, like a high pitched uh, with the inflection on it and stuff. That's the English name <laughs> that doesn't. Uh, do they care because maybe like the Japanese voice actor? Well, they'll probably get the regular Japanese voice actor for Mario. We have the in yeah. Well, with Mario, the is that a Gundam up there? That looks like a Gundam. Five dollars from Axis one thousand two hundred and forty seven. Homie is totally gay. Dog whistling. Terry no fucking way. Any straight man had an issue with Peach wearing those tight ass biker pants. <laughs> You are so fucking on point. <laughs> you are so fucking on point. Because he doesn't actually speak, he just says, Yahoo, let's go! <laughs> it's just like one guy that does it for the voice. Sorry, all right. um, so it's not, speak. it's not like, you're and, not and they, they didn't want Mario to hire Kuhn. him. They didn't want to hire him because they thought audiences would be too drained listening to that for two hours. So, hot, some hot takes, hot takes. Okay. okay. Jeremy, from DC Games, don't blame me for this, I'm just saying. I've never been a real big fan of the Mario universe. I, I know it's kid and stuff, but you can do like kid universe. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah I agree. I agree that uh, Nintendo this, property is. Where uh, is this freak out about? No, 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 no. You can like how to train dragons with children. Can't yeah, believe yeah, that the absolutely. same guy who makes awesome, awesome swords yeah, is like, whining about games. Peach wearing pants. Yeah, the gameplay and everything, but if you look at the universe, like because this is not a game, this mm. is sailing on the appeal of the universe and characters. There are very eclectic, weird mix of random characters, and, and I guess for a kids film, it has that. When when I saw Bowser and the penguins, they, that was funny. That was yeah. well done, and everything. But Mario is this hype, like. Okay, okay, I think is, we... is Mario's voice the most appealing voice to have in no, a main no, character? But Let's just be honest. I would prefer it over Chris Pratt's really failed attempt. I don't know, because that Yahoo! Kind of, that's friggin' annoying! Like, you think you're fine with that? Have, try and have a conversation with somebody who speaks like that for an hour, right? I'm just saying, wouldn't that start to grate on your nerves? I, I just want uh, a I true know, adaptation. Not... <laughs> I, I, like, I don't care if it sucks. I want to know that it sucks because they've proven it to me. But now you're taking that away from me. I can't even tell you it sucks because they're too, too scared to even try that. So I'm curious, who do you think their target demographic is? Because I think for a children's movie, it'll be fine. But mm -hmm. you're their target. You're, you're well, ben, who, yeah, yeah, older fans. This is actually, this is the point. For a children's audience, the original voice is probably much better. Kids probably, like, adults probably annoying, but kids. This is the thing, though, right? Kids... It's hard yeah, there's no, it's not, what, not showing the replay because, uh, this time. I, didn't. I have lost all respect for you. I time. didn't. I didn't. I didn't hate him. It wasn't like my favorite character or anything, but it uh, didn't bother me. They wanted you to love him, and you didn't love him, so it still failed. It's adore Baby Yoda, right? Yes. So you can do cute kidsies repeating the Mario tagline. Playground. It's me, Mario. Yeah. Yeah. Things that you latches onto. That something that is it there. Are, yeah, I was going Zelda in the one. Like, like they could freaking make such an epic Zelda. I know. And on I, so many levels. If this fails, I think Nintendo's just going to put their hands up and, and surrender when there's so many other things they could be doing. Just just on Zelda, right? Yeah. Uh, if they did it animated, okay, you could keep some of the goofy little. Yeah, Charles Martinet is a really movie. good voice actor. Yeah. So I I th I still think that Chris Pratt is a bit of an upset and stuff and and some of the kind of fun goofy ganondorf things but if they, they could do live action zelda yeah. and go freaking lord of the rings yeah. with it and that would be so epic that would be so i need a, i need to look at cell sword arts forward with that but i think let me add that to the list Shediversity attacked me over a misunderstanding of response. <laughs> Shediversity obliterated by Bane's self sword arts. What? Is this the video? Armchair Warriors versus True Swordsmanship? Kyle looks like it. Yeah, I mean, most of the sword community is fucking LARPers, let's be real. <laughs> yeah, I know about the Grape Fantasy book series, yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm guessing that's it. I kind of want to get to the point where he's bitching about too, Peach. Like, they, they want to play it safe too much, they don't have the balls to try. Sometimes, like, like, was it which Zelda was it that that had the wearing the chainmail, and it was before they went Wind Waker. Right? They actually tried to push Zelda in a bit more realistic. You know, I don't know if it was before Wind Waker. I know there was like Twilight Princess and stuff got a bit darker. Why well, there was Twilight Time as well? Look back, Kane style Legend of Zelda. When Nintendo World that they yeah, yeah. So, it basically despised Disney as a company now. Hmm. Everything that it's done, and uh, uh, I don't have to like. I don't want to support. 
nothing, nothing. Yeah, you feel like holding back. No, 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 it's just, I mean, like, maybe I might splice in our weekly, you know, what's good for corporations thing just right there. <laughs> uh, I don't understand why you're trying to push. I did see the. Why are you making so much yeah. time? Uh, so, anyways, <laughs> Disney, okay? And they would have to make something really good without any of their propaganda in to even let me consider having my kids watch, right? Mm -hmm. Nintendo, at the moment, um, I know that there are conversations to be had about uh, how they're too trigger happy with the copyright stuff and business practices and things, but I haven't seen any issues with them trying to propagandize their characters, their worlds, for any woke narrative. And I am far more. Nintendo hasn't gone woke. Inclined to let my kids go to, or even take my kids, sorry, to go see Mario as a fun kids film mm. than I would with anything Disney is making. Yeah. They no. have that going for them. And, and if, if, honestly, if Nintendo can push like an actual competitive kids uh, content, you know, in the mainstream, competitive to Disney, I'm fully on board with that. I'm very interested to see your reaction after watching this trailer. Well, let's have, let's have a look then because we've got the trailer. Up. Oh, no. Uh, <laughs> no, he's about right, to watch I've, the I've trailer live. Yep. Things. No. <laughs> okay, okay. How let's go. Bad that is. Okay. That was awful. That was that was oh Chris, I like it, Chris. This was not your role, man. What's Ooh. the opposite of try hard? Because this that is like was cringe. I kind of like it. <laughs> that, that's yeah, here's the part where Peach shows up in the fucking peach pants. Maybe you know, uh damsel. What do you think of the creator called Mersh? I don't I don't know. Oh guys, spam your Chris Chris the Narc Chan emotes because Chris is here. <laughs> I'll settle for a little shoulder. Four dollars and ninety-nine cents from Red Kitten. Please, just a little flex. Hell, I'll settle for a little shoulder. I don't know who this is. I'm not even gonna broach this. They seem like a crazy person. <laughs> Chris, Chris, the dark chat emotes in chat. Here. Let me, uh... Yeah. Holy shit. <laughs> the chat is loaded. <laughs> Alright. Uh, there we go. Happy. <laughs> since, since you donated so much. I know. Another day. Someone else gooning in chat. Mersh is a crazy person. Do not engage. <laughs> In distress, high pitch, girly, and stuff like that. That was total mainstream Hollywood girl boss voice. Yeah. Uh, I need to go back. Why? Just... That was an awful voice of Peach. Mm. Mm, all right, I need to go back. Why? Just... That was an awful voice of Peach. That was like. Peach was supposed to be, you know, uh, damsel in distress, high pitch, girly, and stuff like that. That was total mainstream Hollywood girl boss voice. Yep. Yeah, unfortunately. So I'm not a fan of Peach's voice either at the moment. Sir is coming. Together, we. Mm -hmm. What's wrong, Chad? I'm fascinated to hear your thoughts. Funny how a few moments ago, Mario's getting beaten up by a monkey, mm -hmm. and now Peach is looking real, real, real cool real, there. Real tough. And... What do you mean? What do you mean? What, is he... what do you mean by that? Huh? What do you mean by that? Oh, Mario's being beaten up by a. Monkey. <laughs> Not these monkeys beating on Mario. Uh, <laughs> what do you mean by that? What do, you, what do you mean by that verb in there? That noun? What's that mean? Next to the toad. Does that want to help it? Or, really or capable. He axle. spins a weapon around. Now. Wait a second. Before this movie, there have been games where Peach is the leading character. There's a game where Peach saves Mario. Peach is a character in many of the Mario RPGs as a party member. It's not uncommon for Peach to be an active participant in the story. Character introduces a girl boss. Fine, new character. This isn't a new character. Peach has been an established character where she has been a delicate princess for a very long time. You'd, and... or you'd also say that's the core of her character. Yeah, and she also engages in a in in tons of sports against Mario and Bowser. Like they played soccer against each other. She's an Olympic athlete. She's an Olympic athlete. She's a kart racer, a tennis expert, a golf expert. <laughs> Well, yeah, where Pe Peach is a fighter in Smash Brothers. 
<laughs> Peach is not only not a damsel, she is 100% capable 100% of the time in every activity she participates in. That's a cool yeah, all she's had girl boss moments, but I, especially in the... Uh, uh, I forgot where I heard this, or even if it's true, but the universe slash stories are just actors and stage plays based off of Super Mario 3. Yeah, I think he played Mario 64 and nothing else. Also, yes. Completely Mario IP focused mm -hmm. movie. She should be the damsel. Yeah, absolutely. And just the way she speaks, even like even if she's like a, a badass, she should still have that high pitched voice. Absolutely. Like, ah! And you can have Peach like be out of fight, but you, to do it in like in line with the character in a girly fun way, like they do in Smash Bros. Mm. All right. What, you don't have... what, what is girly about Peach beating someone over the head with a fucking umbrella, you motherfucker? What are you stupid? What's what's dainty or woman like about hitting someone with a that's like if I hit somebody with a fire poker. It's going to hurt either way. I whip out your know, pants and uh, halberd in Smash Bros. Yeah. She, instead, she's fighting in a fun, girly way. Yeah. yeah. This is pissing me off. Yeah. Well, this They're taking away the femininity of, of Peach. Peach. Yeah. Princess Peach. Yeah. It's taking away the femininity of Peach. What are you fucking on about? What are you on about? You were literally smoking drugs. Give it her pants. Yeah. Freaking come off it, man. I know there's a joke in there somewhere for that. What? Her voice is reminding me of like, what have I, what animated show have I watched recently where it just had this girl boss voice? Anyway, it's giving me vibes of something recently, but I can't remember. Uh... Are going to stop that monster. How? Look at us. All right, all right. So one thing that doesn't make sense to me, right? And this is one of those things where I don't feel the elements connect, right? Mm -hmm. Mushroom Kingdom. Mushroom Servants. How is Peach a human being their ruler? This is like... Conquest? Consistent world building. <laughs> like, like, I, don't, at us. Like, I can't tell if it's a joke that he's making or not. Is it a joke? We're adorable. <laughs> Are they, are, all right, are they an entire male species of spore mushroom things? And they. What are you on about, Chad? What are you on about? What are you doing? Have to. Oh, Chad, that's <laughs> messed up. I, 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 we need to go into the world building to answer these questions. I know, that guy, that guy in the dark shirt is so sick of his shit. He's just sitting there silently. Questions, right? I've so many, like, why is she there? Like, I don't know, but I know that conquest. Nintendo, they've made more books on it. I mean, but, but is it like a hive where she is their, their queen and just spits them out regularly? Like, they, they, what, 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 what do you, what do you, what, who gives a shit? <laughs> do the mushrooms just become sentient at a certain point? I don't know. Then why is she ruling them? It's like, like, this is what, some colonial, you know? Yeah, maybe, who knows? I mean, aren't their heads mushrooms? And also, aren't they just mushrooms that they walk on? Like, isn't that like their family or something? No, there's a class. All right, so, well building issues, okay? Just one of these, this is one of those things that just don't connect for me. Stop that monster. How? Look at us. We're adorable. Oh, I got this. Oh, this uh, is the good bit. You're gonna like this. Bit. Is it? Uh, like, yeah. how are they floating in the air? <laughs> oh, um, why do they choose this type of architecture? Oh, okay, uh, these are the things I need. Yes. Oh, uh, magic. That's how. Uh, magic. No problem. <laughs> Thoughts? N traditional male hero being made look like a goofy idiot, and yep. the uh, female character. I can't tell if he's joking or not. I can't tell if this is a bit because this seems like parody, right? Like this feels like parody. That feels like parody when he says that right now, right? Competent. He's such an idiot. I, why do I have to put up with it? Holy crap! This is freaking going woke. It is. What are you talking, Shad? Are you are you are actually on drugs? You are you are actually crazy. You are actually crazy. That is a crazy sentence that just came out of your mouth. There's that is the most unhinged thing I have ever heard anybody say about Mario movie. Oh my goodness. It makes me sad. You know how you were talking about before? I haven't seen Nintendo do anything and all those things. Like, oh, oh, it should be bloody dead. Oh, Mario's always been goofy. I don't... Mario's such a traditional male hero being a squat, yeah, blue-collared worker. I know. Yeah, the chubby mustachio Italian guy is the, is the pl pinnacle ubermensch, bro. <laughs> I was just waiting. I was just waiting. Dying for me. I, 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 I was like, I was on the. I was Five dollars from Axis one thousand two hundred and forty-seven. For everyone that doesn't know, the toads look like that because of a curse. They used to look like people. Huh. I didn't know that myself. Yeah, I was like, no. Like, I don't support subversive woke crap. All right. Um, I don't support subversive. What do you? What do? You, what do you even show your kids, Chad? What do you? What do you? Will you let them enjoy anything, bro? Like, and. Uh, is it for the trailer? I don't know, but this seems like they're purposely going the other way to make Mario look like a joke, a goof, mm -hmm. and uh, Peach. It's a it's a kids comedy movie, brother. What are you talking about? What are you? It's the girl boss. Come on, Mario! Our big adventure begins now. Boro is an Italian plumber fighting a big lizard. I know, like what? Ah, 
get it out, get it out, get it out. <laughs> it's freaking consistent. Just reinforced by your statement there. <laughs> oh my god. What it what it what, what who is who is they that are doing this, Shad? That are There's a huge universe out there. So she's gonna teach him how to use the powers. Why does she need someone to rescue her now? She, what like... do you mean? You're just making implications based on a movie that you've never seen. Have some joy, you fucking miserable loser. God, you're so soy. She should just win the day herself. With a lot of galaxies. They're all counting on us. Not counting on you, Mario. You're not the hero that needs gonna save us all. Yeah, not counting on you, Mario. They're counting on us. I'm only the leader of a nation. No pressure. <laughs> like literally, that's literally just Mario Kart, something that Peach is a part of, and she is a capable driver. <laughs> <That's all. laughs> all right, we're gonna listen to that one again. <laughs> like I can hear the Chris Pratt in it, no matter how hard I try. Yeah, it's not doing that for me. You didn't like it? You were so excited. Just the animation before. looks great, but it that has some massive warning signs. Or what they're going on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Massive warning signs. Okay. I'm just sick of this crap. And the thing is, perhaps the story is good and they're able to make the goofy Mario is a goof moments fun and comedic. And Maybe stuff. it's because in the power jet, but it's the first time though, in the it's world. It's consistent crap. And, and the fact that they're constantly making it that a man can't rescue a woman, mm. when that's actually a really important what are you? What are you on about? You are actually a crazy person. Fundamental thing that boys should be taught. It's like, if you see someone in trouble, especially women and girls, you step up and do the protective role because that is your role as a man. That's what being a man. Shad, Shad, if you, there is a crisis situation, in like, let's say Shad is in a supermarket and there is a mass shooter event. Shadiversity is not the man stepping up to save the day. Okay? The guy who uses a sword is not saving anybody. It's like he read all those stories about the Knights of the Round Table and thinks they're literally real. Essential part of, right? And they seem to be robbing that and making men just the goof idiots. The heroes are goof idiots. The heroes are the goof idiots. <laughs> Why are you basing the perspective of masculinity off of popular media when it's not representative of what masculinity should be at all in the slightest? <laughs> Chad could have stopped 9 11. And, uh, it's frustrating. I mean, we, we, we kind of wanted to watch this for a reason. <laughs> well, now, now I need to watch it not because I'm interested in it, just to see how bad it gets and let you guys know because uh, that's part of the watch that we hold. No. You do it as well. What, what, what? Oh, sorry. It's just... So you hate watch just. To tell people that things are bad. Just that I, from what we saw, the fan response seems to be pretty positive as well. Does it? But that's just normies being like, yeah, like mm -hmm. look at the music, look at the world. It's all just. Been I feel. I feel like he's just saying this because he ex he's expected to say this, and like his audience would want him to say these things. Berries for. Are you thing. saying Nintendo fans are normies? There's normies in every fan base. Oh, okay. Yeah. I just wanted to clarify. Yeah, no. it's not just every. No. <laughs> uh, look. Yeah, there's a lot of people that don't. I, and the thing is, it seemed more. Uh, well, how subtle was it? I don't know. But if it's the, if the only thing is well, I know. girl boss Peach and Mario a bit more of a goof, but he does end up being the hero that saves Peach in the end of the day, maybe it'll still be good. All right, I could be. I feel like it's pretty in your face. Like when I first saw that, I wasn't even listening to the audio. I was watching. I saw it from across the room on his computer screen. I was like, wait, hold up, wait, what? Yeah, they went out of their way to make yeah. girl boss Peach in that. As a, a they made bit. they went out of their way to make girl boss Peach. Oh my god. <laughs> they should have made Princess Apple. And she was Supergirl boss, so that way we didn't affect, affect the femininity of Peach. Very primary kind of thing. It's almost like, see how progressive this is? It's like, oh, uh, even coming to Mario. Japan, you're our last bastion. Oh, my. Reality in this sea of subversive crap. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The white Christian fundamentalist thinks Japan is is the savior of western society man where have i seen that before oh my god i've never i've never seen a take like that before from a heavyweight intellectual <laughs> like where well, mango was still uh, pretty based I'm, you, not, I'm, not even, I'm not even gonna touch that statement uh, I'll let... we'll say that for another debate then, hey? manga is still pretty based what does he mean by that what do you mean by that shad what do you mean by that but you did. I, I was almost signing off. It was such a good smooth sign off. But it was still conversation. My, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, no. Sorry, sorry. I'm, glad, I'm glad you did it. Still good things. Any other? Any other comments? I'm, right. just, I'm waiting for the the next trailer when it comes out because I'm. Oh. 
I want good video game adaptations. That's all I want. Just, just give me mm, that. I just well, want good video games. Now, now Mario's on our radar because that's what we do. As you oh know. my god! Oh my god! I would, I wouldn't be able to do this. This is insane. I couldn't walk around in life being this miserable. I really couldn't walk around this in life being this miserable. Like actually. Holy shit. Yeah, Peach has always been a girl boss. She's literally a queen. I can't take it anymore, do you? <laughs> Hold on. I need to do I need to do some duolingo. I'm just gonna correct some mistakes. It's almost midnight, so I gotta make sure I keep my streak going. <laughs> this is a this is a way to keep your streak and Sarah. Sara. Uh, tu, tu estás. estás. I forget. Estás siempre. Siempre. Preocupado. I can't remember. Preocupado. This Ocupada. Is, this, is, this is why it was a mistake on my on my previous video. There we go. I need to do that. Seven hundred and twenty two day streak. <laughs> I didn't wanna I didn't wanna fuck it up. I'm actually gonna go take a piss since we're since we're <sighs> How long have I been going? Two hours already? Wow, time flies when you're covering Shad, huh? Oh my god. I, I would love to see that clip of Shad and Jazza fighting at a convention. I would really love that. Uh, we have a Shad thread in the Discord server, which I will link in case y'all aren't in there and you can become a member of little guys incorporated all right so do that second hour is shit the shit the stream second hour is shit the stream <laughs> But yeah, if you drop that in the if you drop that in the Shadowversity thread, because we have a thread system to keep track of everything, I'll pull it up after I watch the Cell Swords video. All right, I'll be right back. clean 
Uh, so I, I do want to say we're like two or three members away from getting some more, uh, emotes for the chat to use. Uh, I just added a bunch in case you haven't used them as a member. I've been trying to just encourage people to do more of that. Um, also, while I'm here, make sure to buy Mana Potion Coffee at manapotioncoffee.com. Use the code D10 at checkout for 10% off your order, babes, my little guys. Ah. <laughs> <sighs> Okay, okay, okay. Let me let me brace my bones for more horrifying things. Where is it? There we go. Uh, hello. Yeah, and if you've been a member for long enough, you now have a cat maid next to your name. That cat maid being me. And yes, the hot chocolate will be coming back soon in case you're a lover of the hot chocolate. Um, we're going to do another limited run of it. Nice uh, winter into summer, you know. I've been struggling with whether or not... Okay, this guy, right off the bat, uh, is in way better shape than Shadowversity. Where am I dropping this spicy video? When you get into the server, we have a section called Drama News. And you can search through there. And we have one called Shadowversity Lal Cow Supreme. So there's a drama news section and you can find everything there. Not I should make this video for a while. I've gone back and forth on the pros and cons, and I've come to the conclusion that it is a valuable piece of information that I can impart to the community. And today we are discussing the current state of sword media online. If you've been on YouTube, TikTok, or any other social media platform, you probably understand that the conversation about swords and swordsmanship is mostly dominated by pop culture, fantasy, anime, video games, and things like that. And that's not necessarily bad, it's what people want to see, but the problem is that's kind of all you can find. Yes, there are some amazing people doing some historically relevant and, um, you know, tactically correct sword stuff online, but they're few and far between, and realistically, they're not very popular channels. I think that we're one of the more popular channels that does a lot of fencing stuff, and really the reason that we're popular is because we also do some of the silly stuff like memes and things like that. If we just did historical swordsmanship, we wouldn't be nearly as popular, and that's because people don't seem to find it as enjoyable as they do, you know, anime and stuff like that. And I yeah, because they, they engage with swords in the same way. It, it's like swords are cool, but you get all your lore from not history. You think of history and you go, oh, boring. It reminds me of school. Ah, let's go to sleep. So that stuff isn't going to do as well. I find that to be a shame, but that's just the way things are. But today I want to talk to you guys about what makes good sword content and who you should and shouldn't listen to and why. I don't think I need to say this, but I'm going to say it anyway. Anime, video games, pop culture, and all of those things are not accurately representing swordsmanship. It's cool, it's fun, and it's enjoyable to watch, but that's not the way that swords would have actually been used. But because most popular content creators who do things about swords are courting that audience, they tend to couch things in terms of those anime techniques or things like that. How many videos have you seen kind of breaking down video game sword fighting and things like that? It's interesting, it's fun to watch, but the, the conversation is dominated by that to the point where it's really hard to find realistic swords. Yeah, I was going to say, this guy is mad attractive. This guy's hot. <laughs> <laughs> this guy's super hot, bro, compared to Shad. Holy shit. Dude, he 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 rocks. He rocks the fucking Middle Ages drip. Oh my god. I wish I could look that good in an outfit like that. Holy shit. Horsemanship unless you know where to look. The other issue is that there are very few people I wanna I unironically, I wanna know where he gets his drip from from. I wanna know where you get your drip from, uh Cell Sword Arts. Please, please, I want to know. Please tell me where you get your drip. <laughs> who are popular swordsmanship creators who do a lot of fencing. And it's integral to fence to understand how these things work. Popular sword media on YouTube and other sites like it lack a true representation of the art of swordsmanship. Most of it's focused on looking cool, doing cool choreography, and there's nothing really wrong with that, like I said before, and I'm going to say that over and over again in the video, but it is what dominates the conversation, and we really lose the reality of how these things would have worked. And I find that, honestly, the stuff that we make just to be cool isn't nearly as interesting as the stuff that is realistic, because the realistic stuff is really cool. One of the biggest problems with this is, well, it's difficult. Fencing is hard. Uh, it is a skill. It is a martial art. It is a art that we pursue through our entire lives. It's not something that you just get. And so to actually be good at fencing, you have to dedicate a lot of time to it. And if you're also a YouTuber creating a lot of content, uh, consuming a lot of media like anime, video games, and things like that, you don't have as much time to dedicate to 
getting good at the real thing. And so a lot of people who are popular and making popular stuff about swordsmanship don't actually fence. Uh, and that leads to a fundamental misunderstanding of how these things work, which yeah, leads- Yeah, honestly, he's got an amazing point. Like, I see a lot of people, because, you know, my background, what, I, what I'm what i good at and understand sometimes becomes the topic of public discourse. And it makes me really annoyed when people who aren't well-versed in that give opinions or discussion on that. And hopefully as I grow as a tabletop individual, I can start to give educated opinions and takes on discussions about that medium. Because sometimes I see things and I go, I don't know about that. Um, but th there's a huge problem with the whole armchair expert thing. And that's not just this genre of YouTube. It's a lot of YouTube. And I, I totally, totally get that. I wish I... I think a lot of these YouTubers do actually have time to learn those important skills like fencing. Um, I think they choose not to. I think they choose to ignore that. Shad cosplays as a historian. Yeah, Shad could spend more time being a historian, but instead he chooses to wear the facade of being one rather than actually doing it. Um, you can take the time to do it, right? Who do want? Who who needs to be educated? <laughs> yeah, I'm really digging the sash. Like, oof, it's really good. It's so fucking good, dude. Ah, oh, god, the fucking linen rope fits it matches the sash like he matched it on purpose to experiments and demonstrations and yeah, shad cosplays as an artist too yeah he can't commit to anything that requires a long form amount of effort and time videos about swords and swordsmanship that are misinformed and not necessarily intentionally so but they are and the question arises why is this important we're not using yeah you could you could get good the thing is a lot of these guys don't want to get up off their fat ass or they have bad sleep schedules myself included i think i would be a better athlete if my sleep schedule wasn't bad it's midnight right now i probably won't go to bed until 3 a.m um so i think a lot of my for me personally i can say that the people i know only do youtube and not much else and don't engage with things that could make them a more well-rounded individual that's something I need to work on myself, but I think that says something about how YouTube works, that not a lot of people get that expertise. ...swords to fight anymore, so why does it matter if our media and everything else is totally inaccurate? Well, the real answer is it doesn't, but it's just kind of stupid to be misinformed. Um, I get a lot of comments in my comment section saying, so-and-so did an experiment and it proves X, Y, Z, and when I look at the experiment, I can see all the problems with it and how it wasn't set up in such a way to accurately represent the way that these weapons would work. Maybe they were using, you know, weapons that weren't up to snuff, maybe their technique wasn't very good, maybe they just had a misunderstanding of how fencing works, and now I have to deal with those comments. So maybe this is a selfish video, maybe this is a video that just, it's my personal pet peeve, but I do believe that accurately understanding the way that swordsmanship so works is valid. So they don't go outside, yes. There is a medieval history channel called Modern History TV. The guy who owns it is actually a video game studio CEO. Um. It's worthwhile, and it might not be crucial for every single piece of sword media to be accurate, but it's something that I think that we should understand and have a deeper, you know, appreciation for. So I've spoken about experiments on YouTube a number of different times. There's been quite a few content creators who have tested things out. We've done it, we did the Great Reverse Group Experiment, we started to do some spinning experiments, we've done certain situational things, and we always give you kind of the way that we're testing things. Now, I admit that sometimes in the past I've done an experiment and then I've learned things later and I've gone back and corrected myself. Chat, that's a very great point. <laughs> which is crucial. If whoever you're watching is not- And what are, what are his tattoos? Are those elvish? God, why is this guy so good looking? Holy shit. Diesel's bisexual awakening. The The reality is, guys, is that I have this longing and personal want to, like, live in fantasy medieval Europe and go on adventures and solve problems for people. <laughs> I want to be a witcher so bad, bro. <laughs> I know, even his tattoos are on point, dude. Able to correct themselves and say, dude, Shad is so fucked. He's so fucked. He's right and he's hot. <laughs> 
say they were wrong when they learned something new, they're not worth watching. But a lot of these experiments that I see are done with like foam swords exclusively, or they're not geared up, or they're done in kind of situations where there's very, you know, limited testing circumstances, or maybe they're testing for too broad of a thing. And you can kind of watch a video, and if you use common sense, you can see the pitfalls of an experiment. I'm sure there's some experiment that we've done that aren't ideal. And you know, those are things I want to go back and I want to fix and I want to look at. The best experiment or exploration of a technique is done in full gear with steel swords because that's the closest that we can get to replicating the way these things would have actually been done. When we do it in low gear or no gear or with foam swords, every single one of those is a compromise that's letting us not do this to the fullest extent. That Diesel is definitely a bottom for this guy. <laughs> could for safety's sake the performance of the weapon or you name it all of those things detract from the validity of an experiment that's being done it's crucial for our viewers correct and hot is an unstoppable combo <laughs> viewers to be critical of the experimenter or the presenter you shouldn't just take everything somebody says with a grain of salt including me i've done experiments before where maybe i didn't have the proper testing procedures or maybe i didn't have a crucial piece of evidence or information and that makes my experiment invalid i can't think of any off the top of my head okay, uh, i did one a while back nine, where i said that leg hits this is literally a nine minute video if shad's response is longer than 15 minutes he he lost period are uh, bad and they don't work and then i started Two dollars from QTV's hood ornament, Diesel Thirst. How the turns have tabled. Okay, okay, let me clarify. As a as a straight man, right, I can recognize when a man is hot. But it's not that I want him to fuck me, it's that I want to be him. You know what I mean? You you know when people look at like a like a like a Ryan Gosling character, they want to be him. They don't want to fuck him with somebody who showed me exactly how you can do valid leg attacks. And so I changed my mindset and I made a video about it. I called myself out. And I've done that a number of times. And you know, anybody worth their salt should be able to do that. We did an experiment recently where we used these foam great swords. And like I said earlier, foam is not steel. So it wasn't a completely valid experiment to show one to one how these things would work. But we also said that caveat in the video. From the beginning, we laid out the idea that this was not an experiment to show exactly how great swords would have been used in crowd control. It was a thought experiment because we couldn't accurately represent how great swords would work because it's too dangerous to fence full force with steel great swords. So we had to make a compromise there if you want to do the experiment at all. When a presenter gives you that information, when they give you that caveat, you can trust them a little bit more. And I realize it might seem like I'm just talking myself up right now, but what I'm trying to do is give you a baseline of what you should expect from a valid experiment. If there are caveats or if there you want to be him and fuck other men, God, I no, 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 <laughs> no, 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 that's not the answer. Restrictions to the experiment testing process, they should be stated to the viewer and not just glossed over. So how do you, the viewer, know when a presenter is worth listening to? Well, we've already talked about a couple of things, but there's some other things you should be watching for. If they're talking about how to use a sword, they should use a sword. They should fence. Not everybody has to go to a tournament and win gold to be worth listening to. I fence and train under a number of different people who don't compete in tournaments because they don't like to, but they're still amazing instructors and fencers. No, they have to do the art. If you don't do the art, you cannot talk about how to do the art. Now, there are people who are historians who don't fence, and they have valid insights about the history of these weapons, but they don't have an understanding of how they would have been used. You cannot understand how these things would have been used just by studying books. You have to pick one up, and you have to do it, and preferably you should do it with steel and full gear. We totally believe you, Diesel. Oh my god. <laughs> Now, because Hema and fencing are not as popular as anime and fantasy and things like that, it can be hard to find legitimate swordsmen online to follow and watch content from. So I've done the work for you, and I have found a number of different channels who do awesome swordsmanship that's based in reality. These are people who actually... Wow. Uh-oh. Guess who's not there? Shadowversity. ...actually fence. They practice the art. You can go check them out. They're awesome. And I'll say right off the bat... <laughs> the style, the posture, the knowledge. This guy stands up straight. Ugh, I love the kind of man that stands up with his back straight. His sciatica is in line. <laughs> but we're not going to agree on telling the nerds to pick up a sword. <laughs> on everything. They might say things that contradict things that I say, and I might say things that contradict things that they say. But that doesn't make them invalid. It just means they have a different opinion. You know, they could know something that I don't know, or I can know something that they don't know. But these are legitimate fencers. And guys, guys, this is this is the gay agenda right now. The gay agenda is happening in chat. Big gay is trying to make me gay. Okay. <laughs> And they make good content, so definitely check them out. And the last thing that I want to say is, it's not bad to love fantasy and anime and video games and things like that. I love them, I play them, I watch them. And I don't even get mad when a character does reverse grip in some silly fantasy series because it's fake and it doesn't matter. The issue is, people have a hard time differentiating between that fantasy and the reality of how these things have worked because they just don't have enough exposure to them. But if you watch good content, you're critical of the presenter, you understand how experiments are formulated and you check out awesome sword channels, you can learn more about how these things are actually used and that'll lead to you enjoying swords and swords media even more. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> uh, okay, so Shad wasn't even mentioned in the video. Shad wasn't mentioned in the video.
And then Shad started drama with him for no reason. <laughs> he wasn't calling out Shad at all. The response video is an hour fucking long, dude. Holy shit. Shad's response content is... Do you see? Do you see? <laughs> the sword community, for the most part, throughout its entire history, has pretty much been a really supportive and collaborative community. We have responded to back and forth, uh, time to time, disagreeing, but one of the... I wasn't invited to the gay sword cookout. Yeah. Uh, kind of tones that you'll notice through most of these disagreements was an acknowledgement that we still like each other, even not like, we respect each other, the content they're making, and we kind of just want to add to the discussion, even if we're vehemently disagreeing. Okay, so you guys, what, what, do you, what do you mean? Because I saw a video, he didn't mention you at all. He took no shots. He did not accuse you of anything. It kind of looks like you self-inserted yourself into this and you just did it. And we've been doing this for a while, so much so that things do evolve. There's been some falling outs. Uh, Matt Easton disassociated with me because I have very religious and conservative viewpoints I share on Night's Watch. Because so you're maybe a bigot in my opinion. Skylagrim doesn't like me or our content. But something Skalgrim doesn't like you either. Oh man, dude, you fucking you got no friends. That we've never done is uh, openly say you shouldn't watch anyone else's content because I That's not what he said, Shad. That is literally not what he said in that video. That is such a fucking crock of shit. He's saying that some of the people making content saying that they're sword experts aren't sword experts because they don't train in those tools still believe, even with our disagreements, we understand that we all, and I know I certainly believe this, that we all contribute positive, beneficial things to this community. That's an outrageous statement. Okay. Now, by the way, I'm actually probably even- Yeah, and he's carrying a double-edged sword of all things. <laughs> And closer with some other members of the Sword community than I've ever been. Metatron, Lindy Beige, Modern History TV, Jason Kingsley, and I still get along great with so many others. I, I'm sure Jason Kingsley, who is a billion times more smarter than you and actually focuses on the real aspects of medieval life, could not give a single flying fuck what you do with your day. He is so much more important than you, Shad. Unironically more important than you. He is literally a CEO of Rebellion, which is a video game company. I don't know about Metatron, though. I, Metatron's had some weird takes that I've been like, what, what's going on, bro? <laughs> so, I don't want to think, people thinking that, you know, everything is falling apart. This standard that has been maintained, this kind of respect and desire to build the community, has been really beneficial and positive, and it's something that I want to continue. But this is also why the recent video that Soul Sword Arts released is particularly troubling because in this video, not only does he say that he is encouraging people to not watch other certain content creators. But today I want to talk to you guys about what makes good sword content and who you should and shouldn't listen to. Shouldn't listen to. So how do you, the viewer, know when- a well, Oh my God, he's clip chimping him. Right? He's saying who you should and shouldn't listen to about the practice of combat because of who does and doesn't use the tools for swords-based combat in an actual artistic sense of fighting. <laughs> you know, like, like you literally just clip him to. Presenter is worth listening to. He doesn't mention who, but uh, it's pretty clear he's talking about us and... What do you mean? There's a bunch of other sword content creators besides you that do what you do and aren't experts. You aren't an expert. A couple of others. I'll talk more a bit about that later. But not only does he say 
and encourage here, whoever watches him to not watch other members in the sword community. He outright says that people who do not practice the art should not talk about the art. Meaning, y y okay, so if you don't, if you are talking about the techniques involved in boxing and you have not put on gloves and gotten punched by a guy, you probably shouldn't talk about it, okay? Because there's a very big difference between the practice of being punched and punching a bag. Swordsmanship. If you don't do the art, you cannot talk about how to do the art. And to me, that is particularly aggressive and negative. So much so, why I feel it's necessary to make this response. So, the first thing that we really should discuss or address is how do we know that he's, in a large measure, talking about us here at Shadowversity, and why in a video like this, it's particularly disingenuous to not be upfront and honest about who you're referring to. He's being professional by not blasting you by putting your name in the video, you fucking tool. There are two main issues with not being open about who is talking about in his video. The first one is that it muddies the water in regards to uh, the community generally. There will be people who will come to his video and assume that he's talking about certain creators that he might not have actually been meaning or thinking about when he mentioned certain criticisms. and. Uh, that's quite an issue because it actually doesn't let the people who we might be referring to specifically to defend themselves. And I know for us- What if this guy has never even heard of him? That would be even funnier. I mean, I know that's not true, but that would be a way funnier outcome to this. Us specifically, there are criticisms he mentions in that video that are just flat out incorrect and false, which absolutely we should defend ourselves against those accusations if he was referring to us when he said them. And that's the second issue. By not being honest about who is talking about specifically. Okay, okay, Shad, you're not in drama, but normal people don't get on the internet and go, don't watch this fucking guy because he's a fucking idiot. You don't do that. You do that in my business because that's what you do. It's about making face, saving face, destroying face. It's not about making like you don't you don't do this in the working world you don't do this <laughs> hello xyli raiders hello xyli raiders welcome welcome i'm looking at uh christian fundy ai expert sword smithing expert shadowversity this evening um and it is <laughs> it's going it's going oh it's going <laughs> oh that we're watching an hour long response video um, to a nine minute. This is an hour long response video to a nine minute video about who is and isn't a good sword creator on YouTube. Okay, this is sword combat drama. <laughs> sword combat drama. <laughs> If people come to his video and assume that he's, say, talking about us, which many people have, by the way, they then will assume every single criticism in the video is referring to us, is a criticism against us, or- Shad, there's so many people on the internet that think they're Jedi experts in swordsmanship that have never swung a sword, okay? That make opinions about Jedi swordsmanship when that is not even real. <laughs> Uh. anyone else that they assume he is referring to and he might not have been actually thinking about certain people in certain criticisms but because a good portion of people who watch his video think it's a direct attack against us for every single point of criticism he raises part of it is that y you guys do nothing but cover fantasy sword etiquette when it's fantasy and can't be applied to reality of which shad you have a fantastical sword there because you have a piece of metal 
duct taped to two swords. We need to defend ourselves against every single thing he mentions and assume that every single point is something against us. But it also, again, when I say it muddies the water, he kind of throws most popular sword content creators online under the bus. The other issue is that there are very few people who are popular swordsmanship creators who do a lot of fencing. Was he referring to Scalagrim, Metatron, Lindy Beige, anyone that he personally didn't recommend? Or was he primarily focused okay, against- Okay, but Metatron, Metatron, Metatron and Lindy Beige don't ever cover combat. Metatron rarely covers combat. Most of his stuff is based around different historical TV shows. And then Lindy Beige covers like 17th century fucking food and like living. It has nothing to do with combat. It's us here at Shadowversity. That's what I mean when I say he needs to be clear about who is talking about. Celsor did respond and it's an eight minute response, which just goes to show you how confident he is. When making a video such as this, you need to be honest and upfront. And I get the impression that he was avoiding mentioning anyone by name. And I could be wrong about this. To have a veil of plausible deniability that if uh, anyone that actually wants to respond. Shad, I don't know how you can take something and like expand on it so much that you're just yapping forever. You, you are a skilled content creator. Cut the fluff. You can say much more with less. You've repeated yourself like three times. Against certain criticisms, he could say, I, I wasn't referring to them specifically. How do I know in a large portion of his video he was referring to us? Well, aside from the fact that David, or is it David, Daniel? David. David. Aside from the fact that David has been making regular passive aggressive kind of snipes against many other content creators in his uh, short contents for a while now. When I look at the landscape of what's popular in swordsmanship on the internet, it's always, let's try and make a giant anime sword work. Does double bladed swords work? Does reverse grip work? What about this weird technique? And it's, it's depressing, honestly. He has also mentioned He's critiquing something. You can't critique something? Oh, boo-hoo. Shad had his ego hurt because he makes dumb fucking anime swords. Ugh. Listen, I, I think I think the buster sword that Cloud uses is based and awesome, but is it realistic? No, I didn't need a video to know that. And criticisms specifically against us. This was in response to a comment of someone mentioning us. So aside from the fact that many of the things that he mentions, that we like to use foam swords in our tests, but then other false assumptions that he kind of is referencing against us that we will address, it's pretty clear that, yes, he is talking about us for a large portion of the video. Hence why we should defend ourselves, because not only is a lot of his claims completely false, he is actually guilty of nearly every single criticism he raises in his video. And my position is... Oh, Shadowversity, why is my channel dying? Three months ago, I produced an hour-long video about a guy who said something mean about me on the internet. And this is something I maintain through the entire history of my channel. More people talking about how awesome swords are, including knights, castles, everything on the, on the channel, sorry, not on the channel, on the platform, the better. It is a net positive, even when people get things wrong or they disagree with them. Guys, guys, negativity is ruining the swords community, in particular when it's negativity against me. Oh, boo-hoo, you fuck. Oh, boo-hoo, you're making bad content and somebody called you out for it, uh. By people watching content that you might not like or, dis or that you might disagree with, it does give a higher chance that they'll find your content, okay? I've held that stance way back. Even, I remember when I first responded to MatPat, he had a video, Knights vs Vikings vs Samurai. There were some people in response to that video saying that he should not be talking about those things, and I felt that was particularly negative. And my response was, let him talk about whatever he likes to talk about. Okay, we should not be trying to shut down other people talking about these awesome things. It's a positive and it just gives chances for Shad should have challenged him to a duel. That would have been really fucking funny. <laughs> Can't believe this drama is happening in full on padded armor. How long did it take him to do that? <laughs> is it a full round or just an axe? <laughs> That's a full round, right? So that gambeson that he's wearing is sleeveless. So those arms had to be attached to buttons on the inside of the gambeson. Um, and if he is actually being historically consistent, he'd be wearing like a shirt under there, uh, like a light linen shirt, usually that you tie the collar up underneath it, right? Uh, the belt is wrapped People around to be introduced into See? The awesome interests that we have. And he's wearing a scabbard on his side. Swords, castles, and everything. So for myself, I don't... Or he might have uh, two gambesons on. ...seeing many circumstances at all where someone should feel censured or feel a lack of freedom to expressing or even teaching something that they currently believe to be factual. If you don't do the... Wait, what? 
muscles and everything. So for myself, I don't see many circumstances at all where someone should feel censured or feel a lack of freedom to expressing or even teaching something that they currently believe to be factual. If you Wait, so if you currently believe something to be factual and that it's incorrect, you should still be able to teach it because you're passionate about it? Is that what that argument was? What? swords, castles, and everything. So for myself, I don't see many circumstances at all where someone should feel censured or feel a lack of freedom to expressing or even teaching something that they currently believe to be factual. If you Wait, so if it's not factual, they can still teach it just because they believe it? What? 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 Stupid don't do the art you cannot talk about how to do the art so this is not me saying any guys if you don't fence and you've never fenced in your life should you talk about how to fence i don't know how to fence should i tell you how to fence should i tell you techniques in fencing answer that question for yourself what do you think Anyone should stop watching Cell Sword Art David's content. I actually think a lot of his content is really interesting, okay? Introducing people to historical swordsmanship from his perspective. But that doesn't mean he gets everything right. In actual fact, when I say he's guilty of every, nearly every criticism that he mentions, we're going to be sharing a specific video. Oh my god, this guy is going to try and content cop him. Oh my god. <laughs> Specifically, his basically reply to us on the double-bladed sword. There has been much talk on the internet about the double-bladed sword. So I think the problem that we see when people try to justify this is they do test cuts on inanimate objects. Or they, or they start with- Okay, 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 no. It's not, he's, he's, he's done things like cut an inanimate object just like me. No, 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 no. What he's talking about in this video is the practical acts, act, act, application of this weapon in actual combat okay every single sword can cut something okay but it's about how effective is it Foam. now other people have done videos on this but we're going to come at this from the um from from the viewpoint of a fencer people who actually do this and fight with these things <laughs> yeah from the viewpoint of a fencer from somebody who actually fights where he is guilty of nearly every single criticism he brings in this video it's not about the swords being foam. It's about only using foam swords, Shad. Okay, it's about not using it in actual combat. Yeah. Also, please note that Sword Art's video on the double-bladed sword, even though he gets some very significant things wrong in the video, I saw no need to reply to it. We disagree, is of course entitled to his opinion, and I was perfectly happy to let people who watch both separate videos come to their own conclusions. It's only now when David is casting criticisms as to the legitimacy of certain tests, and propping up himself as being more trustworthy and authentic, that now it's necessary to point out the errors in that video. But this is the problem about trying to create what I believe he is even, an elite- He even- He's even said that he's done these things, that he's done foam swords, and that- He's done cutting inanimate objects, but he says, he's even said in his videos that you take it with a grain of salt because it's not applicable to reality. ...standard and an attempt at gatekeeping. Remember, he is the one that is encouraging people not to watch other people's content for X, Y reasons, and even going far to say that they should not be talking about it. If you don't do the art, you cannot talk about how to do the art. Okay, if you set that standard, that's you saying that people should not actually trust you or watch your content because, David, you are guilty of this as well, and we will share very clear, undeniable examples from his Double-Bladed Sword video where he does this. Cell Sword Art's video boils down to a number of key criticisms that I'm going to uh, outline here, and then we'll address point by point. First, he feels that uh, addressing or presenting sword-related content uh, in the framework of pop culture and anime can lead to uh, misunderstandings and is counterproductive. Yeah, it can lead to misunderstandings. It just can. There are tons of people who believe a tons of ridiculous things because pop culture has ingrained it in, like, cultural conversation. Try and understand because he says couched in terms that, and so he actually wasn't very clear on that point, but that's what I believe he's saying. And even though later in the video he says, I'm not saying it's a bad thing, I actually think he's being dishonest when he says that because in other videos he's been very clear that he feels sword-related content that is done in the framework of anime and pop culture, giant swords, stuff we do on Shadowversity a lot, hence why it's pretty clear he's talking about us. Yeah, 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 yeah. Anime and video game and all that kind of sword can be a gateway to understanding more important historical context. Yes. Okay, okay, Cole, 
Shad wanted to buy, he bought land with the intention of building a real house that was a castle and making content out of him building his dream home castle. But then his channel started losing money, so he stopped, and now he makes quartering content. Is depressing and lacks integrity. When I look at the landscape of what's popular in swordsmanship on the internet, it's always, let's try and make a giant anime sword work. Does double-bladed swords work? Does reverse grip work? What about this weird technique? And it's it's depressing, honestly. And unfortunately, because I have to run a business and I have to get views, I have to make some content involving that kind of stuff. But I want to do it my way, with integrity. So, he does have an issue with that type of content. Anime, video games, pop culture, and all those things are not accurately representing swordsmanship. It's cool, it's fun, and it's enjoyable to watch, but that's not the way that swords would have actually been used. But because most popular content creators do things about swords are courting that audience, they tend to couch things in terms of those anime techniques or things like that. This is an odd thing to say because it's specifically referring to the popular sword content creators. Because one of the more dedicated things that we've done on Shadowversity is actually criticizing pop culture anime choreography for how unrealistic it is. My entire series, Fight Scene Autopsy, is dedicated to that. You do one hit and they miss, doesn't mean you have to return to normal. No, you can follow up with a thrust or another attack or any number of things. From this position, you can just keep on attacking. You don't need to just thrust and then move back. Like, there was nothing else I could have done. You got me. You got me, Kaladju. You got me. Let alone the lengths of the realism analysis that we go into when reviewing any type of pop culture weapon or fight scene. So I can only assume he's not talking about us, even though he is referring to the more popular sword content creators. What really seems to be his criticism is that he finds it's unfortunate that there are more types of videos breaking down pop culture fight scenes or fantasy weapons and there are straight historical content well simply this is where he should just make the content he wants to see and make and we'll be very happy to continue making yeah, 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 yeah. but okay what he's trying to say is is that people don't want to engage with that we've created a culture where people don't want to engage with historical content regardless of the possibility of you making that out okay shad you and i both know that you're fucking anime content will do better than a historical video just because content we love making. I don't think it's an unfortunate or depressing thing at all that there is so much content talking about pop culture and swords. It's fun and I love it. But Cell Sword Art seems to actually have an issue with that, that there should be made less of it. And that you should not watch it as much as you do. No serfs, no castle, no gold. That's a low value knight. <laughs> bro, bro, this is Canterbury. Bro, you go take your bitch ass back. To... <laughs> bro, this is the Canterbury, you go take your bitch ass back to Camden. <laughs> and then he says he feels he has to do that type of content because it's the only way to get decent views, but he will do it with integrity. Which I think is him saying that a standard that he feels is valid. What is that standard? Well, it's actually quite arbitrary. Some of the other points or criticisms he shares in the video, I think, is his standard. And then we're going to explain why it is arbitrary and hypocritical. He says that they need to be using proper gear and steel swords. And if you don't use steel swords, uh, well, in the video he says less validity or something along those lines because he knows he's used foam swords in his tests. Although in previous comments, before he realized that there are sometimes you need to use foam swords, he says that tests with foam swords are basically useless. There's the exact wording right there. So he has come to realize that, no, there are times when foam swords can actually give legitimate, valid information only if you acknowledge it. And if you don't acknowledge it, it seems like everything that uh, is used or taught with foam swords are less reliable. And then lastly, he accuses, which I believe is- Using a foam sword would be less reliable because there's no weight behind that. Okay, like, I, I run with a weighted vest because we'll do like hikes and we're doing, we're planning other camping shit. And I run with that because I'll be walking with a pack, but it's not applicable to that. It's not the same thing, it's just doing it. accusing us because it's mentioned in other comments that we lack swordsmanship skill and in the video he goes all the way to basically say they don't practice the art of swordsmanship. The other issue is that there are very few people who are popular swordsmanship creators who do a lot of fencing. And so a lot of people who are popular and making popular stuff about swordsmanship don't actually fence. Now other people have done videos on this but we're gonna come at this from the um from from the viewpoint of fencer people who actually okay I don't understand Shad hasn't done anything to present his argument. I don't I don't understand because he's saying I'm coming at this from the point of somebody who's an expert in fencing. And how do you how do you fight that? <laughs> Shad hasn't presented an argument other than that it's a critique of his content. They do this and fight with these things, <clears throat> which seems to be enough to his standard that he feels would make someone qualified to share informed opinions. So yes, being an expert in how to fight with swords would make you an expert in how sword fighting works. <laughs> right. I think the first thing we should address in those criticisms is what type of experience we have here on Shadowversity in regards to swordsmanship, weapons, and history combat in general. Nate. Chad. So, Cell Sword Art's recent video mm -hmm. is 
passing a uh, proposing a contention about what he didn't mention you by name you crazy person what it truly means to practice the art of swordsmanship mm -hmm. in such a way that grants pro okay just be like here's my expertise i'm an expert historian who covers blah 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 i'm an expert swordsman i'm a blacksmith when you start saying those things that gives you credibility okay what do these guys do what do both of you do authority to talk about swords in a legitimate way that can be trusted mm -hmm. and he does basically say that uh we do not have that required experience not just us mm -hmm. but yes yeah, I mean, so that's the problem about not being specific who he's talking to because was he referring to scalagram metatron sh Windy sh shut up and let him speak you fuck Age. Yeah, or I mean, that, yeah, that, that is a thing. Yeah. I mean, David, I love your content. Like, I truly do. I've been watching it since you and uh, Wade, I believe, were in the studio just filming you guys doing stunt fighting. It's mm. it good stuff. I still is. But I don't agree with your recent video. Man, I'm so sorry. Of course you don't, because he's your boss, you fuck. So what do you do? What do you do that makes you an expert? Um, but experience-wise, like, we do have experience. Though not a lot of us are... You do have experience in... Active practitioners. Well, when, you, when you say active practitioners, we're not actively attending, say, a HEMA club, which seems to be the standard that he feels people need to do to be legitimate. When we actually actively practice with swords weekly. We do here. Okay, wait, pause. So you f sword fight in your backyard is not the same as getting training from somebody who's an expert in fighting. Yeah. Yes, and, and you've got 20? 20 years of swordsmanship experience, couched in martial arts experience. That's true. Okay, so you have 20 years of swords experience. Or do you have 20 years of martial art experience? So, like, you did Taekwondo as a kid? <laughs> like, like, you don't, you practice sword fighting in your backyard, but you're, you have 20 years of sword fighting experience? So where does the sword fighting experience come from? Like, did you, like, that didn't, that didn't explain anything. <laughs> and what I find problematic about him proposing such a... Show me, show me, show me. Show me. Be like, this is my black belt. That's it. This is my black belt. An arbitrary standard that he clearly qualifies to because that's the standard he's proposing. You guys all uh, stripped over, uh, all just dipped over, even. Oh. The guy you all dipped over even offered to. De oh, simped. Simped over. Offered to debate Shad and Shad backed out. Oh, not, not surprised. Right? It invalidates so many other forms of medieval swordsmanship practice right now i could do the same i could set an arbitrary standard that falls into yeah training weekly if you're training weekly but training incorrectly you might as well not be training my own qualifications like if people have not gone to japan to study kendo and see real historical japanese swords oh. they are going to be less informed and less trustworthy whenever they speak about okay but like you can get kendo training in places that are japan you don't need to chain like train next to Fu mount fuji to it's about the katana um yeah, I wonder if David has that experience I have. There are many other types of experience that I'm confident enough to say that uh, we perhaps have that he doesn't. We use a very wide range of weapons here, not just swords, spears, halberds. I've had experience with multiple different weapons, um, sword and shield, and we do not only... Okay, but you've had wrong experience and not real experience, okay? When you're fighting in fencing, that guy who's trying to poke you with this fencing sword is trying to score a point. There's stakes. When you and your mate are just hitting each other in the backyard, there's no stakes. Take up a lot of cutting we have handled such a wide variety of different functional swords uh -huh. that gives us a pretty more unique perspective on how swords handle in their various different types and ranges right so if i was to propose that as unless you have done this right you would be less informed and you shouldn't trust other people do you see how disingenuous this kind of arbitrary okay what do you mean he's just sitting next this entire segment is just him sitting next to a guy who's gonna fucking agree with him to give him a sense of like validity and you know, like literally, he's just having his ego stroked by this other bold fucking fuckface. He's basically trying to set up a, an appeal to authority fallacy. So, yeah, there is. What do you mean? You're doing the same exact thing right here, Shad. You're literally doing the same exact thing you're accusing him of. You're you're trying to present yourself as an authority, and you're having a guy sitting next to you going. So there is a, a thought amongst the sword community that Hema is the be all and end all of of learning the art of the sword, which in historical fact. Hema has been around for a few hundred years, where sword fighting itself has been around for thousands of years. I okay, but where are you going to get good training from somebody who's a sword fighter? They're probably going to be around where other sword fighters are going to be. I have an opinion that many in the Hema community actually really dislike, but I think is just blatantly true. The treatises are an invaluable resource. Absolutely. I, I, I think they are amazing, but I also feel 
that they more likely represent a smaller minority of the way historical swordsmanship was done historically because most people didn't learn swordsmanship historically from a treatise or from a master. No, that's true. There was, they had their own... Yeah, but now, now we have the ability and like the breadth of knowledge to learn from a master, which you said you are skilled in martial arts. So you would understand the importance and why it's a boon and a bonus to learn from a master of a craft master but a lot of the time the treatises came around came about in the renaissance period when it was a lot of dueling so it's same weapon versus same weapon compared to majority of history where you're taking a sword to use as some form of, of an advantage yeah. so it'll be on the battlefield or to protect yourself against other types of opponents it, dueling same weapon versus same weapon although big from the renaissance on wasn't really the standard and hasn't I'm been the standard for a lot of history cosplay as an actor at a theater restaurant <laughs> A lot of, in fact, we could more safely assume most people historically weren't swordsmanship by picking it up and trying to figure it out, practicing with part. That's okay. Just because that's how they did it doesn't mean that's like the best way to do it now. <laughs> you don't just learn medicine by just going, let me just practice on somebody. Like is and getting instruction from someone who is more informed not necessarily from what they would consider a master or is treat or is teaching a very specific style and uh, it's, an, it's an assumption but i'd say that's a pretty good assumption pretty good assumption and i'm not trying to invalidate the value in hema mm. i actually think hema should be broadened to accept and acknowledge other forms of swordsmanship practice uh, especially viking reenactment mm. things that are living people, history yeah, exactly things that have been developed in uh, society creative activism there's a thing mm -hmm. called was it the hook shot but it was a, it was a specific maneuver that they discovered yes whipping, getting around whipping. a shield but there was criticism from the hema community saying that's not in the treatises so it shouldn't be considered historical. There, I, there is, and that is the problem, that basically mm. to, to do HEMA, it has to be historical. And by historical definition, for HEMA definition, it needs to have been written down. And there's so much sword fighting mm. before any of this was written down. And I can't... Uh, okay, well then... Uh, yeah, but that doesn't... Listen, it, 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 bringing up the problems with HEMA does not negate the lack of expertise that you have of approach this terminology from the more layman common usage of the word historical historical for most people means the past yes yeah. and uh, the other side to this is that people can develop incredibly good swordsmanship skill outside of hema and this has been acknowledged matt easton he mentions a specific example of a lapper who comes to hema tournaments and usually wins okay there's there's a lot of example of uh, hema practitioners who go to things like hmb which hmb for those of you mm -hmm. who don't know full metal armor absolute brawl it's an all-in brawl um and the hema practitioners unfortunately usually lose mm -hmm. they're, they're not used to, to so many weapons so many different lines of attack at the same time and just technique is out the window i'm going straight at you full ball mm -hmm. um it's it's interesting it's very yeah. interesting to see cross-pollination like that yeah it's brilliant but the point that i, I would, would, I would love to learn historical sword fighting i'm actually more encouraged now to learn historical sword fighting mainly because i think i would look really hot with a sword <laughs> Is that Nate, myself, Tyrant, we all have different types of experience. In some cases, very broad experience. Nate, in particular, has done real. If you have broad experience, then you're not experienced. You're a master of none, jack of all trades. Enactment related, sword related practices for over 25 years, fighting with multiple weapons in multiple situation scenarios and types of armor. But it really does seem like Soul Sword Art is saying his version of practicing the art is studying HEMA or going to a HEMA club. He honestly believes we lack swordsmanship experience, and I think that's perhaps because we do not fight with a sword the way that he thinks is proper or valid. When in reality, there's very likely a broad range of practical experience that we have that Daniel himself is very inexperienced in. One of my concerns about creating a uh, standard, uh -huh. a, a very arbitrary standard, right, um, is that it then creates a sense of authority that certain people, and yes, David is one of them, thinks they're right because they practice the arts more purely or in a better, more pure way than others. The specific example, and I mentioned we're going to be talking about this, is his double-bladed sword video. Uh -huh. I could duel Shad now and win, yeah, probably. There were some very severe flaws and errors in that video, and we're going to be mentioning specifics. This isn't just me trying to cast aspersions and not backing up what we're saying, okay? It was so poorly done that many, many people in the comments referenced our video that we'd done previously. Uh -huh. People still saw that. Hang on, the sword they're using has got an incredibly narrow grip that's going to limit uh, the leverage that you have on the weapon, and they're fighting with it like a sword, which he acknowledges in the comments that, yes, they're fighting with it like a sword, not a spear or a polearm, which is the way we fought with it in our video. Uh -huh. People brought up those concerns, and one of the more disingenuous and disappointing responses, and I've got the comment here, was David basically saying, I'm right because I'm a swordsman, without addressing... Okay, so a swordsman brings a specific set of skills to the table, that provide expertise but if you really want to have a full breath like the ultimate sword channel sword linus tech tips is a guy who practices swords like sell sword arts a historian who's aware of the current of, of the history of the sword that is being covered 
okay? And and somebody who is an expert in the choreography of fighting from an entertainment perspective. So that way you know you have a basis of people who know what they're talking about. Seeing any of the specifics. And that's my concern because that's where creating a sense of authority leads to. I, I really strongly believe, and I practice this for my entire length of time on the internet, you never pr say you're right because of or my authority or an appeal because that is the appeal to authority fallacy so the way you never say you're right because of you but you've done the same exact thing all you're doing is saying you've committed a fallacy like this is a redditor argument the way that you present anything correct and the way that you address anyone to be incorrect is not to say they are noobs or they don't have the experience they're just wrong you need to address the specifics and propose your arguments with the logic and evidence behind it he didn't mention you by name and you're just like going <laughs> so yeah the, uh, the arbitrary standard thing i generally believe anyone Anyone has a right to talk about how to do swordsmanship. That I 100% that I agree. Yeah. So there's things in David's video that mm. I have to say, I, I agree with you for the most part on, on things like not using LARP where available and if safe, mm. specifically if safe, mm. and using full steel, using armor, like if you can, it shouldn't be an absolute caveat, mm -hmm. but if you can, but to say that it's invalid if you don't or if you don't, if you're not an active practitioner, uh, there's a, without going into detail, because Shad's already covered this, mm. there's a lot that I'd love to talk about that. In fact, David, how about I hit you up on email? We'll organize a, a Zoom one time and we'll have a chat because I feel like there's a, there's a lot that I would like to introduce you to if you haven't necessarily been introduced to. Not to invalidate any of your experience. I think you're an amazing sword fighter, to be honest. Um, yeah, but you but want I to get think a lot of call to like fucking go like, like that's what you want to do. <laughs> a lot of the nuances. I came into testing the whip in combat thinking it was going to be a completely useless thing. And in that video, I mentioned it was far better than I thought. Mm -hmm. right? We have proven our own biases wrong quite a lot. In David's video, it really seems like the video... Yeah, maybe he's trying to make forced drama. I mean, that, that could be a possibility because his channel's been dying. So this is a great way for people to pay attention to him. Video was made to prove his bias correct, especially since that, we'll get into the specifics later. He mentions or, or constructs situation scenarios that not only purposely fail, that sometimes just, in, like they say, uh, the double-edged sword is locked away and you can't do anything from this position when it's so obviously you can do many things and we'll address that specifically. One of the big issues I have is that he seems to be saying, and he has said in, our, in comments in the past that mm -hmm. using foam weapons invalidates the test. In this video, he says, it makes it less reasonable to test with a foam sword because foam swords don't carry the weight that a regular sword would carry. Because his since done foam weapon tests uh -huh. that you can gain some valid feedback and information. If you, but then he says it's more trustworthy when people tell you that you're using foam weapons and it's not going to be one-to-one -one analog in such a way that it's not obvious. I, I, like, we okay, we okay. have made that caveat in multiple videos, but not every video, because we've made it in other videos and because it's pretty obvious. <laughs> like, he's most, not a one-to-one -one analog. Most, most yeah. of the time. But, I mean, on that, if we... I think he is actually the shitty and stupid that he took cell sword. Yeah, I think he took it personally. We made a caveat every time we said, these swords are blunt, or these ones are synthetic, mm -hmm. or not, not just us, anyone, yes. um, or these ones are LARP. That would be, as you well know, being a creator. I'm just going to skip to where he's fighting. Sure. But I want to show that in this position where you come in with an attack like this, okay, we're going to test, all right, how easy it is it to track which angle this might be coming in from. That is, but that is so Yeah, Shad is not a manly man at all. <laughs> and he's out here making all these statements about masculinity and fighting, and he's fucking fat and out of shape, bro. Quick, because yes, you're, you're here. The sword is withdrawn this much, yep. but this one is already... On the attack, like an attack with the second blade, in every instance, is twice as fast as re-attacking with the same blade. Yes, because you're making an arc yes. compared to just straight. But David, yes, thinks <laughs> uh, a true swordsman would always be able to easily track it, and you don't get any real benefit out of it. So we'll test it. All right. This doesn't fit properly. I feel fat. Wait, I am fat. <laughs> so first off, we're going to try and do some light kind of um, uh, scenarios, sure. right? and uh, just to see uh, how easy it is to predict the back blade. Right. So they said from a, a strike that comes in like this, you can always predict where the back end is going to go. And so, so if I went. Yeah, because I was trying to pre-predict that. Exactly. The, so point. if you go into a bias thinking that every single attack is going to be the back end, you set yourself up for fail. Because if I was committed, that would have been a solid head oh, yeah. headshot right then. But then, even if I want to do it, okay, ready? Yeah, I got sliced Slice. there. This time, Nate, I'm going to let you know that's the angle. Dude, these guys are fucking out of shape. <laughs> you can hear them both breathing. So you know beforehand, I'm coming in for your gut. Oh my god, this other guy, is, he's, he's even. Shad's tired, but this other guy's even. Okay, we are always starting from that yeah, bind, though. All right, ready? Yep. Again? Yep. So, we're it's, catching it here, because to move that way down. Maybe. Or your gut. So even when you know which direction it's coming in. If I was committed, I could really hit you. <laughs> 
hit him, break through it, kill. Is it too fast? Let's try that again. Because I feel like starting from a static vine. True, but like this was what they were doing. Okay. Yeah, the thing's not meant to be yep. two swords tied together, bro. <laughs> ah. Now you went low, but you saw that it was going oh, to I was getting direction. ready for anything. Yeah. So, can some, uh, uh, someone... I don't have the time to watch the other live streams. Uh, aside from being... He's like... Okay, he's like, L, like super homophobic. Um, fucking a moron. <laughs> he's a lol cow. He's like a lol cow. He's like Australia's quartering. <laughs> I'm tempted. I'm tempted to see what his what cell sword sword fighting looks like now because now it's just like this guy. Oh my god, this this sword fighting with with funk music, bro. <laughs> Battle of okay, okay, this is the real sword fighting. <laughs> okay. I I just I'm not I'm playing this at normal okay, it's at 1.5. Let me play it at normal speed. I'm gonna compare it to this at normal speed. I'm just curious. <sighs> So they said, you can't really do winding and binding. But in that exchange, I wound into your guard you and did. got you in the shoulder. I would say I captured the blade there. <laughs> I wouldn't say you captured so again, it. again, from this position. We're starting from that bind. From that bind. <laughs> if, this was, if this was a battle to the death, you better be fucking pushing yourself because that is not good energy that you're bringing. So I got his arm, but I lost the leg in the process. All right, now Nate has the double-bladed sword and we're gonna do the same test. If I can predict as easily as uh, Cell Sword Art says, the direction. So I want you to be tricky. Like, like, don't go in the obvious kind of angle. So from this position where you've struck high, right, you're gonna hit with the back end and uh, if it's gonna be easy. So be tricky, see what you can do. Right, sure. Ready? Yep. <laughs> I know the giggles are really funny. <laughs> like they're moving really slow. <laughs> I can't believe there's an MLG edit of this, bro. <laughs> and it, it, it's based, this kind of fighting is based on points, right? So points hit. On someone. Uh, I'll probably read his book and I'll um, I'll highlight stuff, and we'll go over parts of his book. Like like the way that they're moving is a lot more athletic. <laughs> I, I love how this guy has fucking combat edits. That's so fucking funny. <laughs> 400 pages. Yeah, I was going to say, there's a pride flag there. Uh, Based. <laughs> I love that it's a funk edit. <laughs> I know it's the Giga Chad music, bro. It's the Giga Chad music. <laughs> oh shit. Well, it's similar. It's similar.
Oh shit! The tunes are an interesting choice. Oh yeah, I I've seen I've seen this by the way, uh, Nick. Here, I'll pull it up for chat so that they can see it. Are you ready? Yeah. Fight! There we go. So yes, guys, there is a sword fighting community. If you didn't know. Look at the bra look at the bra this is brain damage 101. <laughs> <laughs> Me and the lads going out to hang out in a fucking field and hit each other over the head until our brains stop working. <laughs> But yeah, and then there's like, I've seen this. This this is like a really famous one that it like went viral when these, this guy hit him. I think this was Russia that this happened in. Here we go, it's like right here. And he like bashes him with the fucking shield after this. Like you are so concussed after that. Like it's it's Jover. It's it's completely Jover. You're like your brain don't work. Here, let's uh let's see Cellsword's response to all of that since we're on this long diatribe. Okay, again, again. He makes a nine minute video. Shad makes an hour long response. Cell sword response, eight minute video. Okay. Hi, my name is David, and I am the one man show behind all the content you see here at Cell Sword Arts. And yes, I have seen Shadowversity's response video to me. I've been debating what I wanted to do. If I wanted to make a point by point rebuttal like he did, if I wanted to just ignore it, and I've kind of come to the conclusion that I think Shad misunderstood the point of my video, and he did. that led. He deliberately misinterpreted the point of your video to make an argument about something that did not concern him. Let him to make a premise for his video based on that misunderstanding. So today, we're going to clear some things up. So at the beginning of Shad's video, he says that the sword community has been attacked by me, which makes me feel like he doesn't feel like I'm in the sword community. So how about this? Why don't we have a public live stream? I'll bring some of my instructors, you can bring your co-presenters, and we can clear up any misunderstandings. Oh my god, he invites him to a debate and Shad says no. Listen, I, I know a debate's not an end-all be-all, but Shad is trying to present himself as like a history guy. And a, and a physicality athletic swords guy so if he's not going to defend those things like there's no point in listening to him in my opinion in the first few minutes of shad's video he lays out his premise and it's based on his interpretation of these two quotes this one if you don't do the art you cannot talk about how to do the art and this one but today i want to talk to you guys about what makes good sword content and who you should and shouldn't listen to and why he comes to the conclusion that i'm saying you shouldn't watch other content creators and you shouldn't talk about swords unless you fence the meaning of my words both now and in their original context in my video are that while you should definitely enjoy pop culture and fantasy swordsmanship content like i encourage in the video you should also be able to understand the difference between that debate like fencing but with your words if you will very good greg yes at and the reality of how swords and swordsmanship work. And if you're putting yourself forward as an authority on swords and swordsmanship and how they actually function, you should probably use them. The purpose- This guy is making those big jester pants work, okay? Like, bruh. <laughs> Shad, scared of defending his good name from somewhere other than an armchair, never. <laughs> of my original video was to help educate my followers on the difference between content that's made purely for fantasy and fun and content that's made to help educate them on the way the sword is actually used.
in this context where I'm trying to help my followers discern between fantasy and educational content, the word listen doesn't mean don't watch somebody else's stuff. It means whose advice should you take about how to use the sword? Anime, video games, pop culture, and all of those things are not accurately representing swordsmanship. It's cool, it's fun, and it's enjoyable to watch, but that's not the way that swords would have actually been used. Most of it's focused on looking cool, doing cool choreography, and there's nothing really wrong with that like I said before, and I'm gonna say that over and over again in the video. And the last thing that I want to say is it's not bad to love oh fantasy. Oh my god. Literally Shad clip chimped the fuck out of him. And anime and video games and things like that. I love them. I play them. I watch them. So how do you the viewer know when a presenter is worth listening to? If they're talking about how to use a sword, they should use a sword. They should fence. Not everybody has to go to a tournament and win gold to be worth listening to. I Why fence so and train under a number of different people who don't compete in tournaments because they don't like to, but they're still amazing instructors and fencers. No, they have to do the art. If you don't do the art, you cannot talk about how to do the art. Now, there are people who are historic. It was sort of hilarious. He said that he wasn't specific. It would have been hilarious if he wasn't specifically referencing Shad, but now he says he'll say, yeah, yeah, nobody's going to watch Shad and listen to him and trust him as a, a swordsman expert after this who don't fence, and they have valid insights about the history of these weapons, but they don't have an understanding of how they would have been used. You cannot understand how these things would have been used just by studying books. You have to pick one up, you, gotta you stop have to do it. You People stop have stop jorking a... it to the short king sword fighter over here. God. Cell sword is a high value knight. Hard time differentiating between that fantasy and the reality of how these things would work because they just don't have enough. Shadiversity is not a low value knight. He is not just a jester, he is the entire court. Exposure to them. But if you watch good content, you're... <laughs> oh my god, he's so fucking cool. <laughs> critical of the presenter, you understand how experiments are formulated, and you check out awesome sword channels, you can learn more about how these things are actually used, and that'll lead to you enjoying swords and swords media even more. Now, I think I might still get some pushback on this point, but I stand firm on it. If you do not practice the art of swordsmanship, you should not present yourself as an authority on the art of swordsmanship. Just like if you want useful opinions on a paintbrush- Evil short phobic moment? I am five foot nine. I am, I am a short prince. You ask a painter, if you want useful opinions about the way a sword works, you need to ask- Boss, I only have time to jerk it to one man and he's a goblin. Next week, it's happening guys, by the way. The D&D stream, they start next week. Ask a fencer. What is fencing? Well, it's fighting with swords. It's kind of a universal term. It comes from the Latin root defensa, which means defend. And if you look at something like the Book of Five Rings, they even reference fencing in that in the English translation. Now, I specifically do historical European martial arts, and even more specifically, I do longsword, saber, and rapier. And the reason that I don't make a lot of content about eskrima or kendo is because I wouldn't have useful opinions on those. And within the context of historical European martial arts, the best approximation we have is using steel swords with a certain amount of protective gear. The reason I feel the need to make this Swords are just a sharp penis and Shad is mad about that. <laughs> You're literally taller than me and I'm Dutch. I don't know what that means. Does that mean Dutch people are tall or short? <laughs> listen, listen. Someone used to tell me I was short all the time, all right? Can a man not have a complex? We all got our baggage. <laughs> video is to clear up this misunderstanding and also because some of my videos were clipped in such a way that it loses necessary context. He's hot and holding a sword. I trust him on swords. Yeah. Which reflects poorly on my character in such a way that I feel the need to defend myself. The first clip is me test cutting. So I think the problem that we see when people are trying to justify this is they do test cuts on inanimate objects. And it's being used in Shad's video to prove that I do tests to test out whether a technique works or not against an inanimate object. However, test cutting isn't to prove whether a technique works. It's simply a test of edge alignment. And for me, it's just kind of for fun. Additionally, it's for edge alignment and for fun, bro. Bro is getting absolutely cooked. Shad is getting cooked, bro. Finally, this is one of, if not the first times that I ever cut. I feel it's very important for me to show both my successes and my failures on this channel so my audience can see my growth and understand where my skills are. I haven't done a lot of cutting uh, on this, so 
You're ready to see me fail. Okay, it's not exactly what I wanted, but it's a pretty nice cut. I probably need to add some weight down here. Let's see if we do it again. <laughs> oh, he Shad clip chimped him cutting it. Shad cut out him cutting it in the first swipe. I am not making a fighter based off of cell sword arts, though I might do that now. Um, we're doing a Western themed campaign. Okay, so the stand's pretty loose. I'm not in love with this stand, if I'm honest. I'm probably gonna stuff something in here. It's making the cuts a lot harder. Yeah. The stand's gotta get some weights. Let's try this again. Got some weights. Again, new at this. So. Okay. <laughs> he, he was able to do it. Chad literally fucking clip chimped him. Holy shit. That was so fucking blatant. The second clip that Chad uses is one of me using a foam sword after I make the point that foam swords are not a good approximation of steel swords and shouldn't really be used for a test of whether or not a technique works. Or they are they spar with foam. <laughs> However, this clip's taken out of context because in the video that he's showing a clip from, I very explicitly at the beginning and the end talk about how this is not a true test of this technique because we are limited in the usage of foam swords because true steel greatswords are too dangerous to fight with. We're very clear in that video and here's a clip of that. I do have real steel montantes. Realistically, you cannot spar with them. The problem is it's frankly not safe to spar with. I do love these padded sword trains. It's not safe to do. This guy is safe. But they are not the same as real swords. We just want to get that caveat out of the way because we think it's really important that you know that this is not a 100%. Him and Skalgrim are legit just enforcing the idea that sword plus long hair equals skill. Guys, no shit. I knew a guy who did HEMA stuff, right? And he owned like a suit of armor and kept it in his tr the trunk of his car. I went to college with him. And... um he was, he was a really good sword fighter. And I shit you not, he had hair just like cell swords. Recreation of that. So after we did our experiment, first we have to note that these swords are not steel swords. They did not react like a steel sword would. This is a thought experiment and it's not a conclusive, uh, definitive experiment that proves- I wanna, I wanna do this now, guys. You have no, I really wanna do this. This looks like a lot of fun. This, this is like super athletic looking. This is super fucking nerdy and super cool. I'm sorry. <laughs> I could dual wield swords just saying. Thank you, Cloudy. Moves <laughs> anything? It's just kind of like what would maybe happen. Furthermore, I've made multiple videos talking about how I love foam swords and I use them all the time in my training, but they are not steel and they are not a good approximation for when you're testing whether or not a technique is viable or not. This is a padded longsword and it is one of my favorite training tools because it means I get to do low gear sparring, meaning I don't- Yeah, I have HEMA brain worms now, I know. I don't have to put on my whole hot sweaty kit to get some sparring or some practice reps in. It's also great if you don't have the money to buy a full kit, you can buy one of these in a mask and you're good to go and start sparring or practicing with your friends. Now I have to tell you, it's not the same as a steel sword. The weight's different, the way the blade moves and interacts with other swords is different. <laughs> cool i need this so bad i want to do this so bad this guy's based he looks like a dork with tattoos Zyli, this guy looks hot as fuck what are you talking about <laughs> but it's still really good to get some practice reps in oh, as for the comment section yes i have been deleting comments because we've been getting hundreds of comments that are inappropriate slurs and other things that are not allowed on my PG channel. I'm out in public, I go to a lot of events, tournaments, renaissance festivals, workshops, and I meet my fans and I- you're, Bro, his audience is like, you're a cuck, you're gay. Like, are you kidding me? Don't want to be associated with that kind of negativity. Now, I welcome constructive criticism, but as oh I- Oh my God. Five foot man who fake, plays with fake lightsabers, complains and compares other men's to contrast. Why does, why does feet, this is literally like the type of audience that Shad has like cultivated. It's these guys who like have all these ridiculous cringe perceptions of what masculinity is. Okay. This guy is a billion times more gentlemanly and more masculine and manly than Shad would ever be.
said before, I am a one-man show, and since Shad's video went live, I have been inundated with comments that are disrespectful, hateful, and made in bad faith, and I do not have the time to respond to them, and my YouTube is supposed to be a positive and family-friendly place, so I will be deleting those. So where do we go from here? Well, I'm gonna keep making content the way I always have been. I'm not gonna let any of this change what I do. And I encourage you guys to keep consuming content the way that you have been, enjoy whatever you like. But I still encourage you to use critical thinking skills to understand what it is that you're- Dude, even, even now, he didn't take any low blows at Chad. He did not wrongfully just like, he didn't do the low blows that I did. He didn't go, you don't train, you're out of shape. You practice with your fucking friends in the backyard. You sure you're not getting a crush diesel? <laughs> yeah, shorter man equals smaller hitbox. No, I I legitimately really want to impulse buy. Like, I want to impulse buy stuff. <laughs> Do this. Viewing. This man is so based. So based. <laughs> He's so based. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. <laughs> it's funny how good of a sword expert he is while still while that silly loud cow will continue to bitch and whine like he's doing. This guy's a true expert, as his videos show. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Diesel, you haven't gotten paid for a while. Don't impulse buy. Yeah, I haven't gotten any of my back pay yet. Uh, but I am free from the network, as I, as I said. But anyway, make sure to subscribe. We're like three members away from new emotes again. So, you know, three more members and we, we're there. <laughs> Diesel sword arch time. <laughs> Oh my god. This is this is honestly really amazing. Okay, now time to I there I subscribed. I subscribed, okay? <laughs> now to see his response. So he responded to his response. David from Soul Sword Arts has made a response video claiming that I've attacked him and that I have both misunderstood and misrepresented several of the points of his video. And then Claudio. <laughs> Thank you, Claudio. That was very nice of you. <laughs> we are now we are now there. We have reached the goal. <laughs> Oh, calling Cloudy an oil goddess. Okay. <laughs> yeah, he did respond again. Like, Cell Sword Art's responses were so <laughs> consistent and short. And his are so meandering and long. Yeah. Now, from the offset, I do want to acknowledge that is being very cordial and respectful. And I do really appreciate that. He's even invited me to... He's been very cordial and respectful, and you haven't granted him the same respect, you asshole. ...come on and do a live stream with him to discuss things, which could be a very good idea if he's willing to be honest and genuine and act in good faith. And so... And he is, and you aren't. Ob Oblitus, what, what, welcome to being a big dog. We, we love a new big dog up in here. I want to uh, go through his video, the points that he raises, to see if we're both being honest and fair in this discussion. And he's going to argue that he is not being honest and fair, so ergo he will not go on a live stream with him. Okay, we already know where this is going to go. And, and if that I'll would be humor it for like five minutes. Worthwhile. So David's video can be broken down into four primary kind of points. The first two was that he feels that I, I misunderstood him. That when he you said... misrepresented him, dude. That there are certain uh, presenters the other that are worth listening to. David from Cell Sword Arts. Who you should and shouldn't watch. That he uh, didn't mean not to watch. He was specifically saying not to listen to. So we'll talk about that. Uh, 
The second point was when he was saying that if you do not practice the art, you cannot tell others how to practice the art. It's not word for word, it's effectively what he said. That he was actually meaning that it, you cannot speak from a position of authority about swordsmanship unless you practice swordsmanship. So that's the second point. Uh, he does claim that I purposefully misrepresented some video clips, which I will address very directly. Break it down, homie. It was nine directly. minutes. I know. He uh, is 100% cogent, consistent, and to the point. And lastly, there is an interesting discussion about the comment section and the type of positivity that uh, we would like to cultivate. I'd also like to point out that these are the things that David wanted to address. This is important because when someone does want to defend themselves, they would defend themselves against what they perceive as the most egregious misrepresentations of what they have said. There are a lot of important criticisms from my original video that I point out that he no, 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 There was a lot of you trying to make him look bad. Okay, that was what you were trying to do. You were attacking him, bro. Okay, like that was a bad, like literally there was no drama. You initiated it and you're coping. Okay, you're failing at every single opportunity. Nothing you do has been a good response to any of this drama. It's been meandering, long, and you look like a fat, sweaty nerd who LARPs and plays pretend and gets mad when women decide to girl boss. Like, you're a poser, loser, chump. Like, come on. Yeah, like, it, it was over from the moment you clip-chipped him. Not even mention, such as much of his original video was to try and accuse us at Chativersity of not being very skilled in swordsmanship, and therefore we couldn't really be trusted yeah, in the test that I, we undertake I'll get, I'll get to that David does not try to clarify any of those types that, of criticisms, uh, and I think that is because that was exactly what he was meaning. I was correct to defend myself against those accusations, because they absolutely were- The yeah. accusations weren't directly addressed at you, you weren't mentioned by name, you deliberately... Like... You, you deliberately associated the video with you specifically, even though there's tons of creators. And we got a lot of shorts creators online that are not experts at anything who constantly try to give expert opinions. And more so just in the sword community and tons of communities against us here at Shadowversity. And this is very likely the case with many of the other criticisms that I was calling him out on that he has not chosen to address in this video. Now, in regards to these four specific points that David wants to try and defend himself on, it is very important because if my understanding of his original video was correct, it was structured to be a type of attack against many sword content creators in current- Many, many. So not just you. Now you're trying to, you're trying to phrase this as you're like defending a sword community. His audience and people generally to not watch or trust what many of us say, trying to establish himself as a much more legitimate authority, a true swordsman, than many other sword content creators. He has done nothing but prove in the fact that he is a true swordsman. If anything, he represents the true values of what a knight is, the thing you like to LARP about and fucking drool over, because you don't represent any of those values whatsoever. This is why I took issue with that original video, and this is why it's important to see if his defense or clarification holds up to scrutiny. So let's look at the first point, which is the discussion on who you should and shouldn't listen to. A few minutes of Shad's video, he lays out his premise, and it's based on his interpretation of these two quotes. This one, if you don't do the art, you cannot talk about how to do the art. And this one. But today I want to talk to you guys about what makes good sword content and who you should and shouldn't listen to and why. He comes to the conclusion that I'm saying you shouldn't watch other content creators and you shouldn't talk about swords unless you fence. The reason why I came to that conclusion was that David explicitly said that there are presenters that are not worth listening to. Well, he says it this way. So how do you, the viewer, know when a presenter is is worth listening to. Today I want to talk to you guys about what makes good sword content and who you should and shouldn't listen to and why. He also mentions the popular sword content creators that most- Play the clip. If the video is going to be 40 minutes long, play the clip without cutting context, you fuck. It's not that long. To them, to his standard, don't fence. And the implication of the overall video was therefore their test results are going to be less reliable and ultimately you shouldn't listen to them as a result as he says here. The other issue is that there are very few people who are popular swordsmanship creators who do a lot of fence. He starts shit with actual artists over AI, that he starts shit with actual swordsmen. He's embarrassing. Isn't he part of the club that says we should gatekeep? And so a lot of people who are popular and making popular stuff about swordsmanship don't actually fence. Uh, and that leads to a fundamental misunderstanding of how these things work, which leads to experiments and demonstrations and videos about swords and swordsmanship that are misinformed. If you don't do the art, you cannot talk about how to do the art. Now, David is going to explain how I've misunderstood that. It comes to the conclusion that I'm saying you shouldn't watch other content creators and you shouldn't talk about swords unless you fence. The meaning of my words, both now and in the original context in my video, are that while you should definitely enjoy pop culture and fantasy swordsmanship content, like I encourage in the video, you should also be able to understand the difference between that and the reality of how swords and swordsmanship work. So, yeah, that's really fucking clear and to the point. So, how is this? Uh, uh, how is this? What? 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 What is the? What is the? 
what is the short king agenda here? What he just said then actually doesn't address the uh, quotes that I just raised and the issues that I have with it. Because in those quotes, he was specifically referring to presenters, people who make sort of content, the most popular creators. Now he's actually trying to use some of the statements that he was making towards pop culture and anime style content and stuff, that those statements were in reference to the sword YouTuber content creators, the presenters. And I don't believe that is the case. It's actually quite clear that in his original video, he's very clear about what he's referring to when he's talking about the anime content and, you know, pop culture stuff versus specifically the creators and if they're worth listening to. It's not bad to love fantasy and anime and video games and things like that. I love them, I play them, I watch them. So I don't see this as a valid defense. It's him trying to say, see, I was being very clear that you can watch this content and it's fine when he was referring to anime pop culture content and he wasn't saying definitely not encouraging people to watch sword creators the popular youtube creators that are inexperienced in fencing or simply don't fence so how do you the viewer know when a presenter i don't i don't understand this shad and i watched the same video uh, I, like unironically did he watch the same video because i feel like he's just ignoring things to make his argument he he's like addressed and listened to nothing is worth listening to and that you shouldn't listen to them and i'll uh, address his comments about listening versus watching as he brings them up but my point here is that what he's saying now does not address at all the comments he made in regards to not watching specific but unnamed popular sword content creators the presenters that are worth and not worth listening to. The purpose of my original video was to help educate my followers on the difference between content that's made purely for fantasy and fun and content that's made to help educate them on the way the sword is actually used. If that was the case, which would be, I think, an interesting video, might even be worthwhile, why did he bring up the popular content creators uh, specifically and said who you should and should not listen to? If this was just a discussion about the nature of popular sword content... Because you guys are the ones that are putting out the slop that makes the community focus on things that are going to make historical conversations more difficult to have that's to anime and doing videos about anime and uh, pop this is like the same thing with the fucking starship troopers with shad right like he doesn't like he deliberately ignores things that don't fit his narrative even if it's very blatant and obvious like starship troopers is the most blatant obvious satire ever but he's like actually this fascist dictatorship is great <laughs> culture in regards to swordsmanship, I don't think there would have been a need for him to say that there were popular content creators that don't fence, therefore they're misinformed and they're untrustworthy in their tests, and that they are not worth listening to. You could have focused on the video entirely on just that topic alone. And so when he says the purpose of his video was this specific thing, when he's actually not acknowledging the other points... Yeah, Shad's the kind of guy who talks to someone, who talks at someone, not to them. He only watched the video to find sound bites. He has his entire argument all ready to go, and he just made minor changes to pivot. Exactly. In the video, the points of criticism he has against the populace or creators that there are presenters not worth listening to, I think is actually deflecting something here and even gaslighting a bit to try and say this was what my video was saying. Gaslighting? Gaslighting? Are you kidding me? Shad, are you are you are you in retrograde right now, my guy? Are you are you are you a Gemini? You're you're giving Gemini. And not addressing the other significant point, the points of criticism that I was raising, just kind of ignoring them. This was not the entirety of his original video, not as what he's describing here. In this context, where I'm trying to help my followers discern between fantasy and educational content, the word listen doesn't mean don't watch somebody else's stuff. It means whose advice should you take about how to use the sword? At this point, in the context that he's proposing, that when he said don't listen to certain content creators, he's really meaning you can still watch them, just don't take them as an authority, right? I actually disagree with quite strongly, based on the context of his original video. Wait, when what? you tell someone that someone is... <laughs> Is not worth listening to and he says it multiple times bear in mind you saying you're not an authority don't listen to you like an authority in the last video and he says it again in another video and you just are choosing not to hear it it was so clear he was so on the nose about everything Mind. Framing that there are tests that they do that are unreliable. I feel the context is quite clear that is actually encouraging people not to watch. And I think it's evident because in this point of the video, he goes on to share clips of him saying, yes, it's fun to watch certain types of content, but those clips are in reference to anime pop culture content, not the actual creators, the popular creators that, that don't actually fence, right? That you Man, Shadowversity, bro. It's like a fucking... This bro is built like a shield, okay? The way he be deflecting. You shouldn't listen to. And so I actually feel he's presenting those clips out of context from his original video and trying to shoehorn them and present them that he's referring to the other sort of content creator saying it's okay to watch them. Just go talk to him. If you're going to make a 40 minute video like this, just hop on the live stream. Like, stop being so cringe about it. Just go. Just go there. Just go and do it already. Like, <sighs> okay. All right, uh, doo -doo -doo. here is the 
Here is the uh, stuff where you. Artist and artist. Minor evidence of Shadowversity being protective of his status as an artist. <laughs> Alrighty. My artistry is actually at a professional level. And we'll give him like martial arts. You weren't like Olympic level. This martial is professional. Arts. No, no, I'm not at that. I think artistry. Well, he's getting he's getting blasted on his martial arts as well. Ugh. He should be at two and Rad is two. Okay, I this think is we my need honest to opinion. You can get two in writer. Yeah, I'd you agree with published. that. Thing is, okay. no, no, I've had agents accept my work. It's not the no, same. No, no, no. It's not the same. That is said with a huge amount of ignorance in regards to the no, publishing no, and writing. No, I'm industry. sure it is. So I'm sure I, it is. It is profoundly ignorant right, that comment. Right. But the thing is, we gave him two on artist. Oh my god, Jazza, no. Because it's his full time this job. This has become a really loaded episode. <laughs> I'm not, We're not even going to get Jazza's like, ah, oh, let this end, let this end. No. To play. I'm not saying you're just is good. E easily it's at good. a professional standard. Yes. Yes. People have commissioned well, me. I, agree. Just, I haven't chosen but to Can use I say it. though, though there are, there are a lot job. of people who are at a professional standard who can't work as an artist. Yeah, but we're talking about skill, like, not, you know, wanting to yeah, work. Yeah, I know, but like. Joss, you need to be very honest. If, if, you about to my if I'm going to be very honest, I love you. I, I'd say a point in artist. Well, no, because then you should get a point in artist. We have our strengths and weaknesses, and you know what my strengths are in artistry, and uh, I'm easily at a professional I would, give, I would be willing to give you two points in writer. But put it that way. He is, he is literally whining, yeah, he is whining about his skills and proficiency in art and writing in a tabletop game. You need a, you need a, be a little comedic about yourself. You need to be able to take a joke about yourself. Not be so protective of your honor, as it were. Be able to joke about yourself. I joke about myself all the time. Art easily is on two points. I'm at a professional standard, and you know that. I, I'm... You, you're he is so, like... I'm at a professional standard, you know that. Jazz's face. I just want to end this. <laughs> this this guy understands it. Jazza understands it. He gets it. He gets that he's, he is really trying to save face for his brother here. And that is so sad that's that's what like he he's not like jazza seems like a very nice person okay what up cat how you doing <laughs> yeah this guy has some serious insecurity but your, your strengths are expression easily we expression don't need and to, color we don't need but my strengths are anatomy you have you, and character absolutely you're mm -hmm. a skilled artist Absolutely, you're a skilled artist. Oh no, no, I know what he's doing. I know what Jazz is doing. That's good. <laughs> this, it's a point of reference. How applicable is this to zombie apocalypse in packs? Um, whatever, I have two points in this jumping game. Alright. Just, yeah, just give him the point. Thanks. It's okay if someone needs to join the group and they need the. No, no, no. They will only be persuaded by hey, hang on, an no, artist no. writer. So you're just giving it to me to try and satisfy me? Somewhat, because you won't stop arguing. So no, that's no, okay. Because no. it's actually not supposed to be you who decides the outcome, but you're not letting that happen. So. Yeah, it's really ultimately not up to him. It's whoever the DM is. If the DM says you get one point and it, too bad, fuck off. I, I say I, I, I'm just I'm just being honest. My camera froze. Yeah, and he's he's like. Your strengths are definitely in character expression on facial expressions. Why why Jazza is skilled in multiple mediums of art? It's like not even up for the bait. Like that's. And also in coloring and stuff like that, but the anatomy side of things, I think I do really well at. Yeah, I, I agree. Character anatomy. I'm. I, I guess in right. terms of yeah, don't placate him just because he's your brother. No, he's probably the thing is is Jazz is probably he's like okay, I've known this. He's been like this forever. He's doing this and he's making a moment right now, and we're live. I need to just end this conversation as quickly as possible to save him and me. You know that's what he's doing. He's trying to he's trying to protect him right now because he doesn't want him to look like an idiot. 
pushing specific. We don't need to sit on this. We really don't. We can talk about this on the drive home. It's not. A yeah, we can talk about this on the drive home. He's he's really trying to protect them. Oh my god. Like, don't get me wrong, guys. I argue with my brother all the time. I would never do it while live. That does not happen. We should play a game. This is not entertainment. Huh? Your battery doing? This is not entertainment. Yeah. I'm sure people actually oh, fun. <laughs> yeah, for all the wrong reasons. I bet you Shad never thought this would be happening right now. <laughs> yeah, everybody does find it entertaining. Leave your comments in the section. Oh my god, this is open. Oh, I feel so bad for Jazza. No. Yeah, for me, the worst part is how quickly Shad is willing to crap on Jazza here. Jazza's being nice, not trying to step on his brother's toes. And as soon as Shad feels the slightest bit challenged, he jumps down his brother's throat and shits on his own creativity. What a petty, pathetic excuse for a man. He's not at a professional level. He's just insecure. Yep. Yep. It's very, very sad. I feel very bad for Jazza there. That's really shitty. I, I kind of cover the books. I haven't read them. I read reviews. Um, God, that's rough. That's really rough. Yeah, jazz is genuine too. What you see is what you get. Yeah, I I like it I always and I said this last stream like where part of me wants to like just I wish I could just like like I I've been enjoying ripping Shadowversity apart. But then there's another part of me that recognizes the brother aspect as somebody with a brother um and like you know you you kind of see that angle of it and you think oh man what if somebody was like talking about my brother like that and i and i just feel really bad for jazza and i feel that when i insult shadowversity in a way i'm insulting jazza and it makes me feel bad for him that i'm saying these things about his brother even though they're completely warranted i feel bad for him and he's not even catching any strays. He just has the unfortunate reality of his brother being very insecure and unconfident. And I mean, I think this kind of brings everything into perspective. The AI stuff, the sword fighting stuff, the lashing out with like hour long videos, the lashing out with like wokeness or women being strong and independent. All that stuff is, it's all just a, it's everything. Everything we've been watching with Shad in these last nine hours of stream content it is just his insecurity is projected you know it's his insecurity is projected to the audience masquerading his confidence you know it's i i think there's something to be said yeah now nah, he's his own person i i get he's his own person but you know family in the immortal words of Vin Diesel, right? And he has done it to himself. Yeah. Seems like an angry person that his brother is so much more talented and a better person than him. Yeah. Yeah, he just seems very bitter and unhappy. I just wouldn't want to be that. I just wouldn't want to be what Shad is. And I know I cover drama and it's easy to be like very miserable. But I just wouldn't want to be that because like, you know, for all the horrifying, ridiculous garbage over these over these streams. I mean, cell sword art is pretty cool and I got something to look into now that maybe I, I pick up or maybe I just find a passing interest in, you know, but, you know, there's a positive in it, right? Oh. <laughs> <sighs> It is complicated. I remember a video Jazza did at some point saying he and his brother are very different and basically distancing himself from the content, but still loving him as a brother. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ugh.
I get I get why artists would want Jazza to do something about it too, you know. Yeah, Shad can't ruin Christmas forever. Yeah. But I don't want to see that on the internet, you know what I mean? Right? Like, it's one thing if Shad and Jazza and that family fall apart in distance. It's another thing if I see it happen on the internet. And the family becomes ruined through me watching content. Because I always say, oh, that shouldn't be on the internet. You know, when one of those rape stories happens and I cover it, I go, oh, that shouldn't be here. We shouldn't be talking about this. These people are so young. This is one of those things where I'm like, he shouldn't be making, he made a statement on Twitter. I'll go take a gander right now. Let me go find it. Thank you for that. I'll pull that up now. He doesn't seem to get that if he let some of his bitterness go, he could have a lot more agency in his own life. He could probably find a lot more things to enjoy rather than the hate watching stuff on the Night's Watch and doing all these miserable, mean things. He'd probably find a lot more peace and tranquility and love and fun in life. You know what I mean? All right, I really make statements on politics, but as some of you have been wondering where I stand as compared to the controversial and public views held by my brother, Shad, at this point, I need to make my position clear. I did not bring politics into my video, but those who know me know I'm a proud ally of marginalized groups and a sensitive and open-minded person. The only public political statement I have ever made was to vocally support same-sex marriage in Australia. I did it on a vlog channel. I do not wish to make any further specific political statements, but I will say that it has always been my aim to have our Jazza community be a safe one for anyone who participated in without fear, offense, discomfort, or prejudice. I write this now as controversy has been growing regarding the views of my brother, Shad, Shadiversity. While I love my brother, our views differ on many topics, and he has become more politically outspoken. Many people have commented asking if I share similar views. I do not. Ugh. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't think my video or stream would be the thing that tears the family apart, but yeah, it's like um the idea is like when you when you do the kind of content that I do, it's like how much how much damage do you want to do? You know what I mean? How much damage you want to do it's something that you should always be reconciling with i think as a drama content creator because you definitely get to the point where it's um unproductive or not healthy you know that being said shad is also choosing to push his opinions out to hundreds of thousands of people yeah and i there's an audience for it he's gonna make good money doing it honestly i don't think anything bad will come of it. I think he'll probably do very well with Night's Watch. I don't foresee it doing badly. This stuff does well, and it's easier to make than Shadowversity videos. You know? The thing is, is, um... You know, if this does well, Shadowversity does bad, it just becomes more of this. And I think this content is ultimately worse. You know, like, how can he preach for positivity in a sword community turn around, turn to all these nerd culture things and be like, they're trying to ruin us. They're trying to fuck us over. They're trying. Everything's falling apart. Everything's miserable. You should all feel bad and miserable and fucking terrible and blah, 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 blah. Right? Like, I don't know. Who do, who the fuck engages with some of this content that he's, like, arguing about? Like, boomers. Like, honestly, boomers. <laughs> like, I could not tell you how little most people care 
about shit like The Witcher or Snow White being like, I don't know, Latina. <laughs> it, it would be wild if these streams broke the camel's back. If these streams broke the camel's back, then I must have some magical power, okay? Yeah, one thing's for certain, Shad got me interested in Dave's work. I am really actually genuinely going to look into it. I know I don't have anywhere I could get sword training out here, but I desperately wish I could. I would love to do that. I would love to do that. That shit's so based and cool. I've always wanted to do that. I've, I've wanted to be a stunt person. I don't know why. That's like a 12-year-old boy dream, right? Yeah. Hit a <laughs> big gay at it again. <laughs> this ain't big gay made you do it. I've enjoyed meeting this community and being introduced to all this. We'll watch part one tomorrow. <laughs> it's five hours long. Uh, Google sword training or fencing classes, Diesel. I probably will. I will. I will when I get off the stream. But um, I'm ready. I'm ready to do it. I'd love to participate. We, we've talked about taking Mana Potion to a Ren Fair, and right now it's too expensive for us. But... Well, it's it's more in the city, Eve, right? Not where I am, so it would be a little bit of a trek. But I've always wanted to be a performer at a Ren Fair, which I know sounds like a fucking gag, but I've really wanted to do something like that. Five more hours tomorrow. I don't know. I think maybe I make a video on Shad. I think maybe I do kind of like a comprehensive The Fall of... He's on the list. I will say he is on the list. Um, This Friday, by the way, main channel video this Friday on the Thorps. So get ready for that. Um, Grace Thorpe has been asking for it, and so have the rest of the Thorps. But um, in the meantime, I'm, uh, I'm going to get out of here because I'm tired. So thank you all for another amazing four-hour stream. It was great. Shout out to Xylee for the raid. You'll have a wonderful night and enjoy your evening, probably watching Dave's work and simping over the Short King sword fighter. So, but yes, main channel video this Friday. Good night and sleep well, my bitches, bros, and non-binary hoes. Good goodbye. <laughs>